Hello, listener. What's up? Thank you for pressing play. This week on the Jock and Nerd podcast, we give you our thoughts on the second Captain Marvel trailer. Shang-Chi becomes the first Asian superhero franchise from Marvel. Black Panther gets a Golden Globe Best Picture nomination. We got a new celebrity drop, some surprising Google search results for Jock and Nerd, and a whole bunch more geeky silliness, all in this edition of the Jock and Nerd Weekly for Thursday, December 6th, 2018. Check. Check one. All right. This is for all you fans out there. Let's give it up. Jock and Nerd. Be funny. Disturb it. Jock and Nerd. Spoiler alert. Hey, 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 what's up, listener? Thanks for joining us this week, and welcome to the Jock and Nerd Podcast, where we give you comic book and superhero TV and movie news reviews, and whatever we choose every week. Jock and Nerd! My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the jock. He's the nerd. And he's the felty, otherwise known as Rug Boy. What's up, Rugs? No Roger, no rerun, no rent. That's right. Hey, hey, hey. D, D, you got what? You got a quarter for me, D? I'll tell mama. Uh, now, Raj. Sorry, people under the, Nobody age, knows what we're under talking the age of about. 39 have will not get a what's happening reference. What That's right. Going on. Maybe they'll get the what's happening now reference where they brought the show back, but it wasn't nearly as good. No. <laughs> I love what's happening. One of my favorite shows as a kid. Uh, thanks for joining us if you are a new listener. Sorry to confuse you, but visit the show notes for this episode at our lovely website, jockinerd.com slash 251. So you get links to everything we're going to talk about, how to get in touch with the show, how to subscribe to the show for free. That way we buzz your device in your pocket. You get a little tingle. Wowie zowie. Every week, <laughs> every Sunday <laughs> when the show comes out and guys uh, it's been quite a week a little bit of a crazy week uh in terms of several different things but if you haven't heard the last show we dropped the epic 250 with amazing listener roast and i gotta say again you guys killed it very good that was very very good actually they killed it better on, than i thought it would yes be. much but we're super i'm still super impressed i'm still kind of buzzing over that if you haven't checked that out go back it's hilarious and then amongst all this anticipation for Marvel trailers like we're fucking crackheads over here because everyone is a crackhead. Hook it to my vein, MCU. Uh, we had a little uh, celebrity jock and nerd fun stuff pop up during the week before we get to the news. I just want to break this out of the show. If you follow us on social media, you will have seen photos of J Muse, none other than Kevin Smith's right hand man of Jane Silent Bob, uh, wearing, well, not wearing, but with behind a jock and nerd podcast t-shirt he's got it like draped on him he's kind of put it on him and there was a series of photos uh that was amazing but not only that it gets better listener we have a new celebrity drop oh check this out this is my favorite yo this is jason Mewes, and for the reasons best left between you and your therapist you're listening to the jock and nerd podcast snooch to the nooch <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, how awesome is that? Come on. Whoa. Come on. Wow. That's a fucking That's cel- good, man. That's a good pull. That is a great celebrity drop. That's great. You know, that's a dude that like influenced me. Yes. I, when I was a, a youngin, I saw Clerks. Yes. And I saw Mall Rats, and I was like, these guys are hilarious. And uh, they were great. And a bunch of other movies as well. And I like Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. I'm, I mean, I yeah, I love Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. I believe there's a sequel. I love Kevin Smith, but Clerks was huge for me. I was in college in the development of my, you know, comedy and 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 being a creator and what Kevin Smith has set up. Uh, wow. That's that's an actual second celebrity drop, guys. We have another one. Yeah, it's this one. I'm going to play it just to show you. Hey, what's up? It's Taylor Gray, the voice of Ezra Bridger on Star Wars Rebels, and you're listening to the Jock and Nerd podcast. That's pretty cool. Also, I got that it, is right? pretty. Fun. That's a Geek cool one. Boner. That's a good one. I got that one. Now, I'm sure everyone is wondering, how the fuck did you guys pull this off? 
I'm pretty sure the listener had this in his head. Uh, this was sent to us uh, by a fan, anonymous fan, doesn't want to take credit, just someone super cool. Uh, and we thank him, and, and and it's amazing. Like, it came out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting this. Come on, Imran. Come clean. Okay. That's not, not, what, not what happened. Okay. You blew him, I wasn't, didn't you? No, I didn't blow, I didn't blow Jason <laughs> You blew Mears. him. I, I, knew, I know you blew him. I would blow that crackhead-looking face. Look at him. He's great. But, okay. Here's, look. I, I, like you would judge. I can't. No, I wouldn't. Look at me. I look like Venom jizzed <laughs> all over my beard. The symbiote. Uh <laughs> Now, I can't discuss much more other than to say, here's what really happened. I have a, a, sh- <laughs> here's what really happened. I have a shady uncle. Uh, as you know, if you're Pakistani Indian, everyone has a, one of those shady uncles in, in, in their family. You know who, who he is. He may or may not have connections with the Pakistani mafia. Oh, shit. And these connections may or may not have come through. The Pakistafia. The Pakistafia. That's all I can say. I can't really say much more because the Pakistani mafia, they don't fuck around. Uh, they What happens to you? What's their what's their like uh method? Well, here's what happens. You get a knock on the door. Yeah. They come on knock on my door. And then you look down and there's got there's two guys <laughs> and none of them wearing socks <laughs> and they're wearing leather right. shoes. Correct. <laughs> There's guys in long shirts and uh, they uh, no no torso whatsoever. <laughs> no torso. They come into your kitchen and they smash all the jars of curry powder you have in your spice rack and then they leave. That's it. They don't say that's, anything. That's pretty racist. I like. Yeah, it. they don't let you're like no more fucking Indian cooking for you, and you fucked up. So I don't want to burn my Pakistani mafia card. I'm not going to no, say no. any more about it. But they're going to show up at your house. They will. Thank you. They're probably right outside right now listening. Thank you for getting this now. Also, I want to mention, I would love to get more of these. Listener, if you're near a celebrity, will you just be a fan, be a friend, and harass them into get recording a drop for us? All they got to say is like, hey, this is so-and-so. You're listening to the Jock and Nerd Podcast. Takes two seconds. Just record it on your phone. Yeah, just start harassing celebrities. Yes, but, and then, look. Why not? You, you, no. you can, you know, you may get a- They can take it. You may have a restraining order, but it makes a great story for the grandchildren. You but know? it's worth it. It's totally- Totally worth it. We need more celebrity drops. I got two. Imran, I'll send you stickers. I'll send you stickers. <laughs> I'll send you stickers and one of my actual facial hair for my beard. A white one. There's less oh. of those. Those are rare. No, send him the black ones. Those Actually, are the, ones... The, the black ones are more rare. You're correct. Yeah, that, so. those are dying out quick. Oh, you will get yeah, an actual fit, black the facial hair. Black, yeah, because yeah, yeah, that's not gonna. <laughs> that's gonna be worth money. On that eBay. really is like a rarity. Like there's no. It more is. Of those. So get us some more of these drops. Okay, to finish the story, before we get to the news, one more fucking awesome thing happened. I tweeted out these photos and I tagged Jay Muse saying, "Look, thank you for being so cool." Snooch to the boots, rugs. You retweeted that tweet, didn't you? Yeah. And you tagged some more people in that one. And I added a couple comments or something. You added that Kevin Smith. And before I know it, Kevin Smith liked the tweet. Oh, shit. Rugs got a Kevin Smith like. I always get good engagement on Twitter. <laughs> I'm, fu- I'm, I'm almost. I fuck with Harry Knowles all the time. Yeah, that's fucking great, dude. Rugs is our ambassador. I can't believe you got Kevin Smith to like that fucking you, tweet. You, you geeked out so hard. Dude, you know what that means? That. He saw uh, the name. He saw our logo. He saw the name Jock and Nerd. It's in his head somewhere. It's Probably in there not. subconsciously. He, he looked at it for like a split second. He looked second. at it for a split second, hit fa- hit like, and then... Unless he has like an, a robot assistant that just he's likes like, everything. He was searching for a, a, a tweet that was sucking his dick, yes. and then he's like, oh, there's one. He's like, hey, okay. it's Jay. Like what is he doing? Oh. That's made my day. Yeah. Anyways, he liked it. I don't know if he saw it or not, but that was fucking amazing. Crazy week, and uh, now we'll get to this week's geek news, everyone. The Jock, Jock and Nerd Podcast. Stop coughing. You yeah, heard that? Cough button, Damn that it. cough button doesn't work, my, Imran. I think my cough button on the mixer is busted. I'm going to have to take it into the <laughs> shop. Uh, sorry. So this is going to be that. interesting because you're going to have to be editing out all your coughs. I thought I hit no. that. I thought that button. No, I'm not editing shit. Fuck you. Have you met you, me? You, you never. You never. Now uh, you're going to hear the real Imran. <laughs> yeah, you never. You never edit your mistakes out, right? <laughs> never. I never, never make myself look smarter than I actually am and, and delete things that make me sound dumb. Imran, I, why would Imran, I do that? Imran actually has like a. Um, a stutter, and he also just <laughs> compulsively just screams "fuck" all the time. It takes me twelve hours to edit every show, listener. No lie, that's the truth. No, it doesn't take that long. Ah, uh, look, we hear a whistling noise <laughs> because he has no teeth. <laughs> I remember that. Yes, it still comes and goes. <laughs> Gives me nightmares. Look, we are still jonesing like fucking heroin addicts for this 
Avengers Infinity War trailer. And you know what, Marvel? Fuck you for, for making us go through this. I know. Now, well, let's just acknowledge right off the bat, you're going to be listening to this show Sunday, Monday, whatever, and you'll be like, why the fuck didn't they talk about Avengers or Spider-Man Far From Home or the Godzilla trailer? It's because we record these on Thursdays. And yes. None of this shit has come out yet. The Captain Marvel trailer They're came out. We're going to talk fucking about that. Us. They're fucking if this. So the trailer was supposed to come out yesterday in our time. Wednesday. Yeah, because of, George Bush is dead. They he didn't had to do die. It. Listen, a president dies. The, the mail takes a day off. So does uh, who else? There was a couple of government agencies took the day off. And I obviously I think it was a smart move for them well, to yeah. postpone it. Were you, were you tuned into that? I watched a little bit of it. Oh, I ain't see. Here's the most surprising thing about that whole the, the funeral. It was, you know, it was it was it was poignant. It was nice. Fucking Jimmy Carter is still alive. Oh shit. Yeah, that motherfucker. Jimmy is... Carter has outlived the two presidents after him. That That's that right. means something. He's 94 years old. I was like, is Jimmy Carter still alive? And sure enough, he's there fucking he's sitting there. Sitting back there with everyone. Holy fuck, you got 39. Like that motherfucker was old when I was a child. Yes, I don't know. <laughs> Do you know I learned today he beat brain cancer? At wow. 92. Oh, shit. You can't kill this Holy motherfucker. Fuck. I don't know what he eats, but <laughs> he, can't is, kill this he is a super, super he, human being. Now that we said that, he's probably going to die this week. Uh, we jinxed wow. him. Wow. But look, I'm just saying he's 94. He's the next one to go. But, but he's, the oldest, so? he's the oldest living president. I think Clinton's going before. Before Carter. <laughs> Carter outlived Reagan no. and Bush. <laughs> <laughs> you think Clinton's the next? <laughs> wow. next? We'll see. I mean, I, he likes life too much. Clinton's going to yeah, go. He loves hamburgers. Jimmy Carter's yeah. like, how many more presidents can I outlive? This is fucking fantastic. <laughs> he looks great for 94. <laughs> Anywho. So they postponed <laughs> it till tomorrow. Our time. But listener two days ago to your present time, if you're listening to this when the show comes out and all those other trailers that Anthony mentioned will probably also be out. But hey, yeah, it makes it hey, reason to tune in next week. You can hear our thoughts. Right, you'll hear the last thoughts on the trailer. The, it won't well, be the first, have, will be the last. If you have Patreon, you might get something early. Oh, Shall yeah. we do an instant reaction to a trailer? I don't know. No, this, it's up to you. It's up to the individual. I mean, it's Avengers. It's a yeah. fucking trailer. It is Avengers. Hey, listen, what are these motherfuckers paying for? You might as well give them something. So I just, yeah. I also saw another story. This guy, uh, Collider Stephen Wontraub, uh, kind of hinted that the Avengers 4 trailer may not even reveal the film's title. In this fucking oh. first trailer. So I don't know what we're going to get. A lot of fuckery. Yes. Uh, let's stop talking. Because it's going to be so moot when right. people By the start time listening this comes to this. Out, uh, listener, we are in a pre-Avengers 4 trailer world. It's still <laughs> innocent here. We still have innocence. We don't know anything. It's the kind of nice and, and, and freeing. It's uh, that the childlike innocence. It is the childlike Until innocence. Your uncle takes you downstairs. Yes. Uncle Tom, you, mm. what? Is this the same uncle that is with the <laughs> Pakistani mafia? Yes, he does. He's he's shady. So he's a molester he's shady. and a mafia. He's a shady uncle. Everyone's got that shady uncle. <laughs> he's in Everyone's the Pakistani mafia. Yeah. Everyone's, Everyone's got, got one of those. Let's talk about something we did all see <laughs> and we can actually talk about, and that is the second Captain Marvel trailer from the MCU, starring Brie Larson and a really de-aged Sam Jackson. I can't stop staring at him. In this, Anthony, uh, reaction. What'd you think of uh, this trailer that showed us a little bit more stuff? Okay. Let me start off with uh, the de aging looks fantastic. So kudos to Marvel. I think it looks the best it's ever looked. That's amazing. Um, I watched the trailer. I mean, overall, it's it's okay. I'm, I'm pumped for this movie because it's Marvel and it's Captain Marvel as an, and with a you know, female lead, something different. I'm excited for that. But if it wasn't a Marvel produced film, I'd just be like, eh, because the trailer really isn't anything special. Yeah. And I read that article you sent us and I agree with it. I I couldn't put my finger on why the trailer wasn't like getting me more pumped than normal or more excited. Um, And I I really do believe it's because they're banking on the fact that this is a female led Marvel superhero movie and they haven't really given us any any sort of plot. Right. Or any sort of origin to like sink our teeth into. They're just banking on the fact that it's Marvel and it's a female in the lead. And that's kind of it seems like that might be a little bit of a mistake because this this character isn't isn't like a Wonder Woman where you don't need to go into an origin when you're when you're trying to um hype up this movie and market it. So I think uh I think it kind of was a flat trailer overall. So the article you're talking about, the one from Screen Rant, that's yeah. uh, Captain Marvel's trailers are big in, breaking one of the MCU's biggest rules, being 
that they're forgetting to explain the movie or even like Captain Marvel. Like, what can what, you tell what, us about Captain she? Marvel? <laughs> what is she? Who is she? Rugs, what did you think of the trailer uh, visually and what, what you well, saw? Well, the first trailer, that, that first one that came out was very underwhelming to yeah, me. Yeah. This doesn't really do anything new except for that couple of shots of her in that in the red and blue and uh you know flying in outer space and shooting stuff and a little bit of her power set a little bit more i guess there's not enough here to really latch on to i don't mind that the movie's kind of straightforward and not like there's not a lot of jokes in the trailer yeah i'm kind of like hoping that it's a more straightforward because I, I like i like infinity war and even though infinity war had jokes in it it wasn't like it was serious too, and it had like a lot of weight and a lot of, you know, uh, drama to it. So I'm hoping that this is more in that vein, and uh, I'm glad it's not jokey. But yeah, there, I feel like that Brie Larson, even though uh, I liked her in 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 Room and, and a few other things, mm-hmm. I feel like she's falling like pretty flat here, and that's probably what they're using in the trailer. And I don't know why you wouldn't have any kind of, I mean, if you take um. Wonder Woman. Right. Right. In the first trailer, there's that scene where Diana comes upon uh, the beach and finds uh, Chris Pine. Right. Right. Steve Trevor. Yeah. She's like, you're a man. Yeah. And yeah. in her face. You get a lot. She has, you get she a has lot like, from that. Just that, that one, look. one yeah. line that yeah. she says, like, you're a man. Yeah. And she's kind of half smiling, but like in, in, in awe and in wonder yeah. and confused at the same time. Yeah. And that's a very com- complex, like one sentence yeah and there's nothing like that where you no. even get a sense of her character at all at, at all like what's inside of her if she's you don't know anything and you kind of like can put together that she's brainwashed and that she's remembering things and stuff like that but there's no moment where you're like connected to her I, and yeah. uh that's weird yeah. no and you know i kind of after watching it some more i kind of felt the same way i love first of all i love her charged up look the binary looks fucking great. And the end of it got me where she's flying through the space, shooting fucking spaceships. I was well, that, like, holy that fuck. That was weird when I saw that because I was like, um, I saw a side by side of Iron Man yeah. doing those exact same moves. Yeah. Shooting the exact same thing and the same camera pan, the in same space, angle. Though? In space, Not in space, yeah. but I mean, I think it's from uh, the Avengers movie. Wow. is the, Are you saying they're using reused CGI and just no. skinny no, it I mean, it's so uncreated. I mean, it would have been even different if they were going at different angles, but they're going th- up the same angle from the bottom yeah. of, of the screen to the bottom left to the top right. Yeah. They they do the spin. Yeah. And then it does like a little pause and then and, and he goes. So yeah. there is, I, I put that on Twitter where I, and, and under the, uh, your uh, something is showing. Very, your formula is showing. Very, yes. The for, your formula is showing. It is. It still got me like geek to see that, but yeah, I guess it is very similar. Like, why would you do the exact same? Why not shot? another compose a different shot? Yeah. Uh, okay. Wait. There's a lot of things that that you brought up that I want to discuss. First of all, what did you guys think about the cat thing at the end? Did you guys know about this cat? You talking about Chewy? Chewy the interdimensional like uh, tentacle face cat. So you know? yeah. So in the comic book, the cat's name is Chewy, and he's not a cat. He's a flurkin. Oh shit! Which is a race alien race. That just happened to look like cats, kind of like Rocket Raccoon. Well, let me let me comment on that. Yeah, I think, I mean, I know that she has a cat, but it's called Goose in this one. I didn't know that the cat was an alien cat. Yeah, number one. Yeah, number two. That I think that that scene right there, that being the tag, yeah. is kind of typifies the way Marvel's approached this trailer. Yeah, and I don't think that that is has been their best foot forward with marketing because. If you just look at that as a as a casual fan, you see that tag as with the cat. The scene really means nothing. It, it means nothing, nothing to you. Yeah. So it's and you're, I and, thought that and was weird. So, and yeah. it's so and it means so much so little of anything. All it that, means is that Nick Fury is Nick Furry. Right. Nick Furry. <laughs> <laughs> right. There you go. But like it's it's, lit- it's literally so insignificant yeah. as a casual fan that yeah. you wouldn't even Google what what that means. What the fuck is like this? There's, cat? There was like there's other scenes where the you know other trailers where they do a tag and you're like oh like. What's that? Like, for instance, Avengers Age of Ultron, yeah. there was a tag where Vision's eyes just awaken. Yeah. And you're like, oh, what yeah. the fuck? Yeah. Like, as a Marvel fan, you're like, oh, that's really cool. And then as a casual fan, you're like, who the fuck is that? Yeah. This one is like, oh, it's a cat. 
that you know the, there's a cat. The, this whole tra- I got like this whole they're, trailer, they're, they're, but they're banking too much on this character being more well known yeah. than it really is. It was a little off, and like I was expecting that tag to go somewhere and lead to something else, and it just ended. And I was like, that's kind of weird. Now, going back to your comments about Brie Larson and uh, what we see over in this trailer, Jesse Rodriguez posted Jesus, smile more. Je- don't say that, God. Oh, holy <laughs> shit, Anthony. Don't say that. They're Stop gonna, it, they're gonna come gonna after you. Canceled. Yes, you're gonna get us fucking booted. They're gonna come after you. Me too, out of here. They do not. You don't have to smile, Brie Larson, but you do have to look kind of emotionally involved. Jesse Rodriguez posted this comment. He said, "I'm really excited for this movie, but I have to ask: Do the lines from Brie seem to fall flat for anyone else? Maybe it's the editing." Maybe something just feels off for 75% of her lines in the trailer. I'm still all in. Just something I noticed when watching it. Now, Ruggs, you said maybe that's just what they're showing us. You know, they juxtapose no lines from another scene. You However, can't judge it. But even I like that line where she's like, I'm not going to fight your war. I'm going to end it, right? It's a good line, but it's a little kind of cliche and predictable. And even the delivery on that line could have been a little more... Yeah, maybe she's saying it while like just hanging out. Oh, right. And the other the other possibility is if she's playing this character who has who has amnesia and she's become a Cree soldier, like they show you a little bit more. They found her, they give her a blood transfusion, they made her. So maybe, maybe she's playing an emotionally detached character as this Probably. Captain Marvel. And that's Probably. why do you want to look bored. Uh, do you most want of this to, do you want that to be your flagship character? Uh, that's a good question. That is a good question. I've been dubious on this whole Captain Marvel as their flagship character for a while because just the fact that uh, Carol Danvers has just been through the ringer and her continuity's all fucked up and she's done weird shit. Yeah. And I think her, didn't she date her baby or something? Like that? Or I don't remember something like she's weird. got a crazy history, which she got weird. they're did just she get, like raped or something in the comics. I did lot. Just lots of weird. I'm. Pretty much anything horrible you could think of, they put her through. She's had really thing. slutty outfits too in the past. Well, that's that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, like Wonder Woman's outfit is a bathing suit too. That's true. So what's the big deal? Like, I mean, people are like, you can never put her in that outfit. I'm like, why not? Like, you know, whatever. But the whole history of like mm-hmm. Captain Marvel and the whole thing with DC, like, it's super confusing and it goes back many, many years, which is why Feige's like, we're run, we're doing this based off this Kelly Sue DeConnick run. From a few right. years ago, which is this is what it looks exactly like well, that. I would say that I don't think you can completely you can't tell by two minutes and right. eight lines right. that she has. I, I mean, matter of factly, though, you can say the line delivery is flat. Yes. Like it does seem flat. But again, she's playing a detached, emotionless soldier, it seems right. like as a Cree. Cree so it's warrior. just a, just a strange character uh, identity to hang this such a big responsibility on right for marvel yeah well and it, not only is she the female you know first female marvel character but she's been positioned in the universe as a very strong character because the the end tag in infinity war is she's the savior basically well and in the marvel comic book universe she's one of the most powerful I'm talking Beings about the, there I, don't, I, don't, I don't care about the comic. Okay. I'm talking about this this continuity. Like the 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 end tag is the beeper of Nick Page. Nick Page. Nick, Nick Page. Fury yeah. With the fucking her logo on it, so it's like she's been positioned to be the guy, the person. Yeah, she's coming to save Nick Cage. But that's the thing. It's <laughs> Nick Cage. <laughs> Nick Cage. Nick Cage. Cage. Uh, uh. Nick Fury. Nick Fury. Yeah. Nick Furry. No, um, Nick Furry. Yes. Like the thing is. Carol Danvers has always been around in the Avengers. She's been around for the most part, yeah. a long time. But in this incarnation as Captain Marvel is is new. Six within the last uh, ten years, I yeah. Think. The 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 overpowered, hard stubborn. Like take she was no never shit. a lead. She was a leader. Like every once in a while, she would take charge, but she wasn't like a a leader uh, for a very long time. So like that Kelly Sue DeConnick uh, run elevated her to kind of like a larger thing. So it's like a lot of this stuff is like. Um, it it it's new. It's invent. They they, they kind of puffed her up to this thing. So Wonder Woman has had legs for years, right? Right. right. She's been the cornerstone of the Trinity, you know. So it's kind of a whole different bag here. You don't and have it, to explain Wonder Woman. You kind of got to explain this a little bit more yeah, to get it, people interested. There's a lot hanging on the excitement and people being pumped for this. So I think if you have two trailers that are kind of like meh, yeah. 
Um, I, although I do like the mohawk. That's the thing that I like the, the mohawk. The mohawk and the Super Saiyan hair is cool. I like that it. looks cool. I like that they uh, extended that old lady scene just to prove that you don't fuck around with old people. They will kick your ass. <laughs> yeah. But look, he mentioned Skrull, but they didn't really say that Skrulls are shapeshifters. So I think a lot of the audience will still walk away going, I'm not really sure I get this. What is this movie about? It's kind of vague, kind of confusing. And uh, with all that, maybe they're hoping they're playing it close to the vest that people are going to be surprised in the theater. Mm-hmm. And yeah. or maybe there's like stuff that reveals things for Avengers four. I don't know. I'm still obviously in the bit. Besides- how are you going to get asses in the seat? I don't know. Do you think that it's a, you, do you think that that's a given? Because it's a Marvel movie. Yes. That they're to gonna some like, degree, yes. Uh, yeah, I think it's a given. But it's going to make, like, I think it's going to make Ant-Man money. That's Ooh, what, nah. that, so I did have that same thought. Like, I don't think it's going to be huge. We were Maybe saying. a little bit better than 600, Ant-Man. 700 Maybe million. Maybe Doctor Strange money. Four, four to 600 million final. Look, I this, think it'll do really well just based on. The first on, uh, woman. Uh, well, no, well, no, yeah, all the surrounding stuff. And, and, I, and I think it'll probably be a good movie. I mean, it's also written, isn't it written by a woman and co-directed yeah. by a, a yeah. woman? So you have a lot of uh, females a lot of behind, a lot of women behind in front. For me, look, despite all this, I'm concerned about these things. I'm still in the bag for this movie. A lot, Some of the mystery. Oh, yeah. Some of the mystery I'm still digging. Like, are the Kree really the good guys? I I can't wait to see the scrawl. It looks like at some some parts she's actually fighting against the Kree. Uh, and what is her she mystery? Is. So, and who the fuck is Jude Law playing? Well, you told us, Anthony. I think your guess was correct when you, when you so. said I'm, I'm I'm excited to see some Ronin in this movie. Yeah, I, I don't Ronin think, he's, I don't think he's Marvel. I don't think he's No, Mar-Vel. he's not. No. In uh wait, we saw Annette Benning also as like the supreme being in that area. Those Funko Pops came out. Yeah, so there's a little bit So that's why the cat may not be a flurkin cuz there's some things revealed what from about a merkin? the toys. It's definitely a merkin. What is that? That's <laughs> a fake bush, right? That they put on in the pornos? That, that is a fake bush, yeah. What's the male version of that? Do they have that? I need one I of those. I don't know. <laughs> A on, your, on your face? I trimmed my fun parts a little too close. I need a male merkin to f- fill it out. It's a, a malkin. A malkin. It's kind of a disaster. It looks Malekith. looks like if you think my beard looks crazy, listener, boy, your I'll just I'll leave it at that. Strange. I don't want to give you the mental image of what my pubic hair look like. Your, your just, face looks like the back of a spotted hamster. Every day I get up and I get ready to go to work and I go to the bathroom and I look in the mirror. After drying my face and I say out loud every day, I say the same thing. There is no way I cannot be distracting. What the fuck <laughs> face? What are you doing to me? Like the white hair changes every day. There's a little, there's like one left. Uh, it was one black hair. What the, I, I don't even know what's going on anymore. Is, is it different than the last time yes, I saw it? It's oh, different. Yeah, it's it's different every different. fucking day. It's every day. Yeah. There's an, like I could never commit a crime and get away with it. Oh shit! I'm way <laughs> too recognizable. One, we've convinced him though that he, um, Imran will at one point do just for men his face. I just may do that. Bit. Oh, so <laughs> listener, I may do that for the new year. I may do it once. I will share photos. It'll be very weird. It'll be all. New. Are you gonna leave your trademark white stripes though? Oh like shit! Doctor Strange I could, um, no, I don't. No, you just just the beard, not the hair. Wait, I gotta do the eyebrows. There's a lot of white in the eyebrows. Oh, and do the eyebrows. I'll yeah. just go all black. It'll be completely. Wait, is obvious. your hair white now? It, 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 his see how face much we don't is... care about Captain Marvel. We're just talking about his facial hair. <laughs> his We're hair has like white it. hairs, but he's not white. It, the face is where it's got to go. The face is the problem. Yeah. But then everyone's gonna know I dyed it. But whatever. So what? But not every, we'll know. But we like you. Yeah. It, the the public won't know. I don't know if I want to. I don't want to blend in again. I don't know. I, it's gonna it'll, be a mind yeah, fuck. Just, just it'll go, <laughs> I'll it'll do it go once. away. I'll do it once, right? And then it'll wash out. What you need to do is just for a minute, then shave your whole fucking face oh, so Jesus. we can see what's underneath. No, you know Wait, why would I? Okay, no, no. I'm <laughs> so see through. So it doesn't grow out. You just you don't have that awkward phase where your hair's growing out again. Oh, I see. My hair grows really fast, though. Oh yeah, that's true. You are. You, you have to catch you me. You are an. You are an Arab. <laughs> I got like, like, when can you play Santa? At what point can you uh, <laughs> oh, become a mall I Santa? I can almost play Santa now. <laughs> I definitely have the body for it. I just got to get the hair to cooperate. Dude, you'd be the best. You'd be a jokes on them. They got a Pakistani Muslim Santa. Muslim Santa here. <laughs> I'm just blowing your mind, you freaks. Come on down. <laughs> Wouldn't that be the best? Ho, ho, <laughs> Allah, Allah, Akbar, ho. Imagine Imran's mom <laughs> walks in in the mall and she sees it. Oh, no. I just figured it out. It's Allah, ho, 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 Akbar. 
or something. <laughs> she started slapping. <laughs> secretly. Alhamdulillah, ho, ho, ho. Mom. Alhamdulillah, ho, ho, Mom, ho. I secretly have been a Santa for 12 years, Mom. <laughs> I didn't want to tell you. This could be, Listen, a, this could be a great movie. This is, what it, this is what Allah wants. He gave me a white beard. No, I think I've just written the next great holiday movie. Nobody steal yeah. this idea. <laughs> I'm doing it. Pakistani guy plays Santa for Halloween for years and has to break it to his mom. And then she finally accepts him. And uh, I don't know. I'm, it's like, I'll but I'm not it. Christian. I just like Santa. <laughs> yeah, it's not about this. Santa's not religious. Wow. What were we talking about? Anyway, Captain Nobody Marvel. Cares. Nobody cares. I, what the yeah. buzz is for this movie. I just hope it's good. Yeah. You know. I hope yeah, it's I a hope good so. time. I'm, exci- I'm excited to see a character and learn about this one. But uh, overall, the trailer has me... As Ruggs has said this before, whelmed. Just whelmed, yeah, but I am... Maybe a little underwhelmed. I am excited to walk into a new character that I can kind of let them show me this version, but slightly underwhelmed, Anthony. I'd say slightly underwhelmed. It's just so weird that, like, this character was, for years, like, the sexy character and, like, kind of, like, whatever. And now it's kind of, like, this very, like, safe and, like, there's no... They're not even any emotion. They've, like, completely, like... Take it away. Any kind, any something interesting to happen. It's really crazy. There was no like epic moment, and like you know, like one moment where you're like, yes, that that's Carol Danvers is badass. I I didn't see it. Maybe it wasn't there. Yeah, I yeah. didn't see it. Uh, let's- I'm just saying, she used to be like this flashy character. Now she just seems very vanilla. So mm, it's uh, thank you, Disney. Thank you, thank Disney for all this bullshit. Uh, I don't know if it's Disney. <laughs> no, maybe not. No, I think it's the the PC police. <laughs> Oh, P- it's the mob. It's the PC babies from South the Park. Mafia. It's the Pakistani mafia. <laughs> Listener, let us know what you thought of this trailer. And many of our uh, listeners have. Where do they do this? At our fun Facebook group called the Jock and Nerd Nation. Jock and Nerd. Jock and Nerd. <laughs> Nation represent. That was well-timed, Anthony. <laughs> you like that? This is an exclusive closed group just for you, listener. Jock and Nerd. You can chop it up. You can geek out. You can uh, f- let your freak flag fly. We're all cool. We'll give you shit. We can take shit, but we'll give you shit. Uh, Rugs, this week, you posted something. You put the call out. What'd you post? I said, listen, get to, tell your friends. Let's get some people in this place. You know what happened, Rugs? Yeah. We got over 25 new group members. Oh, shit. We should do that every month. Well, uh, you should put the call out every month. Welcome all. Now, traditionally, if you listen to the show, I will mention new group members because we get them a couple at a time. Am I reading all these names? Do I have to do this? It's fucking 27 names. I don't know. It's up to you. <laughs> That's my answer. Well, uh, why don't I just do it real quick then? All right. Do it real quick. Here you go. Thank you. And welcome to the following. Brian Dole, Sean Barry, Jeff Feltman, Tiona Rose, Kat Walsh, Jesse Bickett, Dana Pearl, Amber Strout Canes, Sean March, Katie Gould, Aaron Sharp, Priscilla Pineda, Clyde Gilman, Brittany Reese, Kyle Big Tuna Russell. J.D. Pastor, Del Champagne Martinez, John Kirkman, Paul Mast, Kevis Mitchell, D.B. Austin, Brittany Fernando, A.J. Rush, Maura McConnell, Timothy Lattis, Nate Aponte, and Michael Drickle. Jockey nerd! Welcome to the group, guys. Thanks for joining, and thanks for everyone adding your friend. If you hear this, tell them that I said their name so they come and listen to this episode. Because I doubt many of them will listen. But they're having fun in the group. That's fine. Moving on. Uh, we talked about uh, Marvel. Last week, we talked a little bit about what Marvel had in the future for Phase 4. We mentioned well, we found out one thing. We mentioned that they were going to say there's going to be more diversity coming to the MCU. There's going to be more inclusion. Oh, yes. Because they have announced uh, Marvel's first Asian film superhero franchise will be Shang-Chi, Master of Kung Fu. Geek boner. Is it Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi? How do you say this, Rods? Chi, Chai? I think it's Chi. I think it's Chi. Because it's like you concentrate your Chi. Uh, The studio has Chinese-American scribe Dave Callahan to write the screenplay. This dude wrote on the Wonder Woman sequel, 1984, and they're looking at a number of Asian and Asian-American directors who want to do something in that they could do something like Black Panther, that what Black Panther did to tie in African and African American cultures, Shang Chi has the potential to do that with uh, Chinese cultures and Chinese America. Now, there's a lot of interesting topics to discuss. First of all, yeah, there is. Anthony, look, none of us are Chinese at all. I'm not Chinese. 
I'm technically a hundred percent Asian, but that term Asian is broad and stupid, and uh, I, I feel like well, it's not stupid. It's well, just, but because if you the thought process behind being Asian is is flawed, because but Asia is a very big place with very very many exactly. people. Chinese, it diver- it's very diverse. Chinese very diverse. people are Asian. I'm Pakistani. That's Asian. Uh, Russians would be Asian too. Are they all Asian? Why do you call uh, Russians Russian and Pakistani Pakistani, and everyone else is just Asian? Whatever. Uh, Anthony, though, you are the closest to said quote unquote Asian. Yes. So why, <laughs> why don't you start out sure. with your feelings once you heard that they're they're bringing Shang Chi to the MCU? Sure. Well, first th- thought I had was yes, yes. Like let's yeah. do it. <laughs> right on. I was definitely like, yeah, like this is I'm in. Like, and I, I and I do not care if it's pandering at all. Like pander to me. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. It's only pandering like for the people that aren't being pandered to. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> um, That's funny. Uh, uh, um. So I, I loved it. I have thought about it a little more. I know uh, there's been some discussion in our group. Humphrey Ching, who's in the Facebook Had group, a lot of has good brought points. Good points. And, yeah. and there's a lot to unpack. I think it will be a good thing. I'm hoping that we get uh, a, you know, a very talented Asian cast, a Chinese cast, because not all Asians are right. the same, but you know, whatever. Um, I won't be too mad. Like if, they hire, like if they hire a Korean or a Japanese or even like a Filipino, like... I'm not going to make the biggest deal about it because they'll still understand. Well, that and it's like culture. We we there's films in Ireland and yeah. England and yeah. like America, like that your Italian rate films where they're like they have all sorts of different white people right. playing. It. Like we can't we can't have it both ways. I'm hoping for an awesome awesome kung fu action. Some hope off awesome martial arts in general. Like I, I'd I'd be expecting some really good fight choreography out of this. Yeah. Um, and I'm excited to learn about this character. I, despite the fact that I'm part Asian and this character is Asian, I've only read like maybe three comics with him in it. I kind of have a, a somewhat of a feel of his character, but I really don't have any like idea of what where they're going to go with it or anything like that. Um, the only thing I would caution with is it seems like they're going to, well, the character is born and raised in China. Right. I think the way to make this even bigger for the American market is to have him be an Asian American character. And we'll touch on this later with crazy rich Asians, which we're going to talk about. But I think what makes um, a character big here is you have to throw in some sort of American feel to it. And I think if you make him an Asian American character that then is not then shipped off to Asia in dealing with being an Asian, uh, an American in Asia, I think that has legs because he becomes a point of view you can relate to. He now. becomes he becomes something that not only I can relate to as an Asian American, but even Americans can relate to, which is why I think Killmonger in Black Panther worked so well is because he brings the African American perspective to a country that is in Africa. Right, that's what people latch on to. Yeah. So that's those those are my uh, ju- uh, jumbled thoughts. Those are all jumbled thoughts. I have a lot of thoughts. So real quick to educate the listener, Shang Chi first appeared special Marvel edition number fifteen in 1973, created by Steve Englehart and Jim Starlin. And make no bones about it, listener, it is a Bruce Lee knockoff. If you pull up that cover, he looks exactly like Bruce Lee. What else came out? Well, what else was big in 1973? Enter the Dragon came out in 1973. Kung Fu. Yeah. Everyone was in the midst of the 70s Kung Fu well, This craze. is the 70s Kung Fu ex- Kung Fu flu exploitation. Kung Fu exploitation. <laughs> is that a word? It's hard to say. Uh, well, yeah. It's like black, yeah, it's that, that era where they, everything was black exploitation, Kung Fu slasher films, like all that stuff. You know, Stanley created great characters in Marvel, but they also know when to capitalize when there's a trend going on, you know? So... This Shang-Chi is the son of a China-based globalist who's raised and educated his progeny in his reclusive China compound, closed off to the outside world. The son trained in martial arts, developed unsurpassed skills. He is eventually introduced to the outside world to do his father's bidding and then figures out that his dad may not be the best fucking dad he thought he was. And uh, he's he, he's closer to what others call him the devil's doctor, meaning his dad. And he also might be centuries old. And then they become enemies. And, What's his dad's name? Uh, I don't know. It's not in this article. Oh, it, I, well, it, it's Look something it very, very, very racist. Is it really? Oh, well, it's oh, so it's Fu Manchu, isn't yeah, it? Yes, it which is. is how they there. I read another story about how that happened. 
they like made they had to tie that in. I forgot what it was, but yeah, his dad is Fu Manchu. So they, they later on change it to something else. Yeah, and it, Fu Manchu is his like public name or his like nickname, but yeah. he's he's something else. Yeah, later, they, a little later, Marvel's like, oh, that's that's old not good. School race rugs. What do you think? Could this be a great kung fu movie, or is this a clear cash grab for this Chinese Middle Kingdom movie market? It's both. Well, I don't know. I think I feel like it's weird because. I mean, Hong Kong makes the best Chinese, uh, karate movies. Right. They make the best kung fu movies. I mean, karate is Japanese, obviously, but like they make the best martial arts films of all time. This is going to be on an, a budget like that's that they're not used to shooting it. Yeah. So that's the advantage. Yeah. I mean, like these guys have been making like kung fu movies for years, and they do do it the best. So M- Marvel's going to have to like bring something to the table to. First of all, not even in a pandering way, but just to impress these people. They're, they're like, oh, you're coming on our turf. You're yeah. trying to do one of our movies. Like, you know, what are you bringing to the table? Yeah. They might, yeah. like, scoff at it. They might be like, yeah, right. But, I mean, like, they did like The Matrix, and that was kind of like one of, you know, one of those East meets West type things where they, the both sensibilities got kind of, they they worked together and made something cool. So if it's, like, kind of like... um superhero level action uh but does it in a way where that audience will respect it i think it'll it, it'll have legs regardless of like the characterization or whatever i think that that the action and how they handle it has to impress that audience overseas as well so um cuz they're going for the global money right that's one of the reasons they're oh, doing yeah. this yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah so um they have to think about that. Like that's like a huge. Um, it's a really narrow. It's a really thin line to to walk there. Yeah. Is it good for Americans, like Asian Americans? I think it's great because if this guy potentially could be in the Avengers or cross over to other movies and whatever, it, you know, and be in that whole pantheon that of Marvel's uh, heroes, that's cool. Like, and that's going to be what's going to be happening in the future. We're going to be doing more of this, you know, I, I could see it down the line in America Chavez movie, you know, or whatever. Well, so yeah, it's I like, mean, they're going to do Miss Marvel, which is a little bit different, which it brings me to Humphrey Ching's points. He is Chinese American and he had really interesting thoughts on this. He's like, I, I don't want this. He's like, as a Chinese American, I'll tell you why, because they're picking well, you, there's, the most there's better guys. You can exactly. do exactly. He's yeah. like, they're picking the most stereotype character to use. He, and he had a good point. He's like, if you want to do it right, make fucking Namor Asian, which we've said, uh, uh, you know, many times on the show would be a great move. And then he said, yeah, I a, think that's a no brainer. He sent me a picture of Donnie Yen next to a drawing of Namor. And I was like, holy fuck, that's fucking perfect. Donnie Yen is jacked and he looks like Namor. That would be great casting or like Ghost Rider. Make him, you know, make him Asian. Uh. But I mean, no, I, I I like the the name war thing. Yeah. Uh, the only thing is there's there is legal stuff behind it. Well, Universal yeah, owns yeah. name war, right, so I don't right. think they can. It's like the Hulk uh, deal, but even one more rebuttal though to that yes. is when Black Panther was made. Yeah. And that is a very stereotypically black character too. Is that, it though? Is, not really. Not to you take the you take the only black animal and you call him the Black Panther. Oh, that's a good point. And then you put him in an all black suit yeah. and he's rocking around in Africa. Oh, I see where you're going with that. Okay. He, oh, and the vil- <laughs> oh, and the, the villain he's against is they changed it for the comic or for the movie, but his name is Manny, it was and he's a black man to, yes, it's dressed not, as yes, a gorilla. Yes, Mbaku was. I mean, that, that's, that's all very stip- like very very racist stuff. Yeah. If you look at yeah. it from from that from a lens not um, of a comic book fan, that's a good point. It's a good point, but the movie managed to uh, be very tactful and 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 make it work. Uh, but I, there, are, there are there might be better characters. I don't know. I don't know anything about Shang Chi really. I, and I'm thinking like, look, they're gonna make Miss Marvel, which is pretty much like me. I'm Miss Marvel, Pakistani American, born to immigrant families. They're not making that yet. They they said they're gonna work there. She's coming. We oh, did talk yeah, about this. Sure they coming. announced that uh, Miss Marvel will be coming because I think this next phase for the MCU is gonna be all these different and uh, ethnic characters that they are bringing in to to, to increase. Diversity. Now, the thing with Miss Marvel is I don't think that's stereotypical. Like, that's actually pretty realistic. So it doesn't have these, you know, Bruce Lee knockoff uh, roots to the character. I mean, any diversity is good, isn't it? Even if it's super pandering. I don't know. Mm. I mean, if it's (laughs) if it's like 
super, uh, you know, they, they don't do their homework and they release a movie yeah. in China and yeah. shoot most of it in Brooklyn. Right. Uh, <laughs> Iron Fist, I'm yeah. looking at you. <laughs> and Chinatown. I think, yeah. <laughs> I think diversity is great. I think that the where it gets dicey is when you take something that's pretty well known and people already have a preconceived notion of and then just change it in the name of diversity when you can be more creative and try yeah. to figure out a character like Namor is perfect because not a lot of people know who Namor is yeah. and he does his look would work well with, if you would make him Asian. It would work. It, would, it carries over very well. You could do a whole thing where like Atlanteans are just represented by all different races, but they're all Atlanteans. Right. You have, right. Of course. Yeah, that, And but, that would work perfectly. But um, That'd be like, good. Or, yeah. and there's there's other characters or opportunities for taking characters that you know, uh, could be swapped and stuff like that, and that's it's fine. So I think if you can do it and you do it to, in a way where not a lot of people are having to like have like I guess whiplash, yeah, from it, like oh my god, that's too much of a a, a change yeah. like, to something that we know. I think that uh, you can do it, and I think they should do it as, as much as possible. Where the opportunity uh, presents itself, yes, it is a fine yeah. balance. And then finally, who should play uh, Mr. Oh, Shane Chi? Uh, Rugs, you had a couple of good picks. Yeah, I was going to go for the guy. I think he was recently in Deadpool, but he died immediately. He was Shatterstar. Louis Tan. Yeah, Louis Tan. That is also my pick. He played the drunken uh, kung fu guy in Iron Fist. And uh, well, he's young. And he's he's young. He's ripped. He's good looking. He's thirty one. He's British. Yeah. British born American actor. Uh, he was Zhu Cheng in Iron Fist, and uh, he's in Into the Badlands too, and Shatterstar. Uh, I picked this guy. Uh, who else? Who else you got? I think Anthony. Oh, go ahead. No, you no, got anybody? Was, no, I don't have anybody because right. I don't know the names of anybody. Okay. Um, but uh-huh. I feel like they're gonna pick someone that um we haven't heard of. Yes, I think you kind of got to go with an unknown. But can we ever have another Bruce Lee? Will we ever see another great? Well, let me let me talk about uh, this a little, just a little further. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm curious to see. Like, I'm really curious to see what they're gonna do with the character because if they're looking to go for the Chinese market, like if they're pandering towards that, that's gonna be hard. The Chinese market gets these films all the time, which mm. is why I'm bringing up like maybe you make him Asian American so that. You have something to fall back on that distinguishes it from the typical Chinese film, because from what I've I've done some a little bit of research, China in general is really into Western culture. They love American shit, and that's right. like this in a lot of the countries but, but in then the East. If you have an American movie yeah. making a yeah. Chinese superhero film, I, I feel like that's gonna be yeah. There's gonna be tough. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Like yeah, that's interesting. And then and then if you don't impress the Chinese market, like are you what what do you have to latch onto for the American market? Like what. Where are they gonna? This is very tricky. In. This is already like, very tricky. Didn't they give Sh- Shang Chi like some powers now, where he's like he can multiply himself and shit? He, oh yes, he can. He can multiply himself. He can create duplicates of himself. Oh really? Yeah. Like uh, Jamie Mad just, Rocks, uh, man, multiple man. Yeah, and then he's just a awesome. He's like the mass, one of the masters. He's of like martial a one man army, basically. Yeah. But I think that's kind of like not interesting either. No, I don't like. The, I don't like him creating. Duplicates. That's they that's should make lame. a better. They should do something better with that. So, and his abilities, uh, and according to Wikipedia, superb athlete, master martial artist, ability to create duplicates of himself, which mm-hmm. come in handy. I guess. I don't know what's, I don't what know. I'm very curious to see where they're going to go with it. I, you know, in the comics, he's uh, he's hung out with uh, Heroes for Hire, Daughters of the Dragon, Spider Man. He uh, back in the day in the '70s made some cameos, but. I'm really, I have not read much of uh, this Shang-Chi myself. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm excited. I'm also thinking about like, like, have you seen the Fast and Furious movies? Um, no, but I know of them. No, I've seen them. All. <laughs> What's the Korean guy's name? Oh, shit. Sung something. I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, whatever his name is. But like, he was great for just age diversity because he, his name was Sung. His name's Sung Kang. Yeah. He's, in the movies, he plays Han. Yeah. But what was cool about him was he was just a guy that happened to be Asian. They never played up that he was Asian. Yeah. He just right. was just a cool there. guy. Yeah. 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 He ended up with Gal Gadot. Right. Oh. And like they did that. Those movies did more for being like diversity and being Asian yeah. 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 than anything else. Cause he, he's just an Asian American dude. He just, just, but just it's there. not even other than in Tokyo drift. He's just yeah. in it because he's Asian, but the, the rest of the films, that's not a thing for him. Whereas, whereas this film, I, I'm very, I'm just, that's why I'm so curious. Cause if, 
the film is just every like all of it's in China. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's really cool, and uh, it's it's nice to see some diversity on screen. But that doesn't really do anything like as far as Asian American diversity. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's mm. not like mm-hmm. this character is. He's defined by being Asian because it's all in China. Right. Whereas like a character like Sung Kang's in Han, he's not defined by being Asian. He's, he's just by a his cool character. guy. Yeah. yeah. I love instances like that. My favorite example is Aziz Ansari in Parks and Rec just playing a character called Tom Haverford. And I'm batting an eye. Nobody questions it. I'm like, there's no way that motherfucker's name's Tom Haverford. <laughs> but okay. And it's I love that. It's great. Why not? Just fucking uh, hire a brown guy to play a guy named Tom Haverford. Works. I'm excited, though. Yeah. Uh, moving on, uh, Black Panther continues to make history here a little bit. It is now the first superhero movie to earn the Golden Globes Best Picture Drama nomination. Oh, shit. Uh, Deadpool last year was Best Picture Comedy or Musical. This is the first time uh, that a superhero movie, it's going to be, go- uh, has got best. Bill pi- Maher just shit his pants when you read that. Uh, <laughs> he, he certainly did. Oh, shit. He's like, oh, fuck you, America. Maybe you Stan- dumb bastards. Maybe you're Stan Lee and your Avengers far. Uh, it's Black Panther is going up against Black Klansman, Spike Lee movie, Bohemian Rhapsody, If Beale Street Could Talk, and A Star is Born, which I heard was also very good. I have not seen it yet. Uh, so, and usually this means that the movies uh, end up getting Best Picture Oscar nominations. Now, it's debatable whether the Wait, movie... Wait, so the Golden Globes ones is a good indicator for the Oscars? It usually yeah. is, yes. It's usually, if you get in one... What, why do they throw in drama? Because there's Best pi- Motion Picture Drama and there's Best Motion Picture Comedy or Musical. Oh, okay. It's two separate categories, which is gotcha. that's dumb, too, because comedy and musical is like two separate categories that should okay. be lumped into one. I was confused with the drama. Like this was like the first yeah, best yes. picture, but for drama. drama, best picture drama. It never got, it also got a nomination for best original score by Ludwig Gorenson and a best original song. Kendrick so, but Lamar being, being best picture drama is the highest caliber yes. nomination. Okay, yes. I got for it. the for Globes. Golden Globes. Yeah. All so right. look, you could debate if it's worth it, if it deserves it. But the fact that it's getting it and it may get an Oscar nomination for Best Picture, that's a little pretty crazy. And it's also kind of cool. Uh, I, I haven't seen those other movies, so I can't comment yeah, on Yeah, me neither. Sure. I've seen them. Are they, is this, So is this up there? Well, with with uh, with A Star is Born in... Bohemian yeah. Rhapsody, uh, Black Klansman. Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, I would say that it's, 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 it's about par, yeah. Oh, I wow. mean, there's emotional stuff in... in a Star is Born that's really, like, well-acted and beautifully done and, and pretty crazy. Um, and uh, Bohemian Rhapsody is just, there's one scene where they do the concert at, at the Live end, Aid. I heard that's the best part of the movie. That is, it's just incredible. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I mean, bad CGI fight at the end, right. and you close the movie with, like Live Aid done perfectly? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's a tough Which one to, ways? And why isn't a star? What's the born, bigger accomplishment? Why isn't a star is born in the fucking musical category? Because it's. I mean, is it a musical? There's music. There's music in it, yeah, but it's, but not, it's a musical. not a musical. Okay. No. okay. It's more of a drama than anything else. It has a couple of musical performances. There's one part that seems musically too, where they just start singing. Yeah. But like, but like that's like once. Like once you would consider a drama and not a musical, or is that a musical? No, it's a musical. Anyways, all this means is <laughs> that has a really good chance of getting a Best Picture nomination in the Oscars, which that's pretty crazy. Uh, it'll be fun to watch. It'll be fun that these movies will get kind of recognized. I mean, they need these these award shows need ratings too. Yes, and b- throwing Black Panther on there again. Don't know the competition uh, uh, as a little a crowd casual pleasing, fan. little crowd pleasing element for it. Yeah, as a casual fan of movies in general, I-, I wouldn't have thought Black Panther would be like it doesn't feel like a best picture nominee, but I don't know the competition well, and and they need ratings. This is the thing. The only thing that you can really hang like uh, uh, on the level of Oscar or Golden Globes is the performance done by Michael B Jordan. Right. All right, that's the that's the shining thing mm-hmm. in Black Panther. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not anything else. I was sort of talking about Oscar worthy acting. Now, Michael B. Jordan was great in Black Panther, but is he better in Black Panther than he is in, in Creed. the Creed movies? Yeah. 
I don't know. I don't think why so. aren't those? Yeah, why, why aren't, aren't those performances yeah. looked at? Yeah. So, uh, is is his performance it, as Killmonger? That's the short amount of screen time that he has, or or is it when he carries the whole entire movie? It, why is it? You know. So it's just think about those things. Mm. Because that is the key to Black Panther, right? That's the that's yeah, the no, that's without the thing that performance that takes it over the time. Yeah, yeah. You, you've got all the you've got all the right ingredients, but he is he is the he is the main course. <laughs> Do movie. they think more people will watch the Oscars if they put a uh, big, big Black Panther as a nominated Best Picture? I wonder if that's a, that, well. Isn't that wasn't I that think thing? they may look. I think that they're they're into creating a moment. Yeah, right. Yeah. They want to create a moment. It's. I don't think it really necessarily matters because as long as they're nominated, they're acknowledged as being great. And then who wins isn't always the, you know, and this is like, this is all over the Oscars and all over the, it's not necessarily who is the best. Right. It's just who is going to make the best moment for that time. Mm. So Kevin Hart hosting this year. Uh, but I Kevin Hart. Wow. Yes, but I read before they announced that. Are we talking about the Globes or the Oscars? No, the Oscars. Sorry, Kevin Hart oh. is hosting the Oscars. Oh. The interesting thing about that is just before they announced that, I was re- I saw some articles going. They're having a really hard time finding someone to host the Oscars. Like nobody wants to do it. Uh, and I think it's quickly become that gig that was great back in the Billy Crystal days, and now it's like, oh fuck no, it's too much fucking trouble uh, to watch what I say, and nobody wants to do it. So. But Kevin Hart was like, oh, my God, it was a dream. I always want to do this. But I kind of feel like he was like their 12th fucking pick on the list. It's the only guy who took oh, the fucking know. job. He's Kevin Hart's pretty. He's hilarious. Pretty, no, he's pretty big. Yeah. He's pretty big and he's pretty hip with the kids right now. Yeah. So if you want young, yeah. the younger yes, audience, yes. Kevin Hart's not a terrible That may be choice. another reason that will draw viewers uh, at this Oscars is having. I'm just looking Kevin at it from a perspective that I, I remember us talking about how the Oscars right. was like, we right. need we need a younger audience. Right. People aren't right. tuning so, into this they, shit. They, got the, they, they fucking nailed on the Kevin Hart. That's a good start. Uh, let's move on to some uh, Netflix Marvel news. So, look, we've talked about this. I have some more interesting details, though. One interesting detail about the cancellation of these Marvel Netflix shows. Of course, Iron Fist started the cancellation fucking uh, chopping block. And then Luke Cage. Uh, and then we talked about how this is Netflix's... Wagwan. Wagwan. Dim call me Bush Rugmaster. Uh, we talked about how this is Netflix's decision. It was Netflix's call. They can either ask for another season or they can cancel it. And they were canceling these shows because they didn't see return in viewers. They have their own original shit. That's really popular. And then the one show we thought was safe a month after dropping its third season, Daredevil, also gets the X. Now, here's the one interesting turn of events. The rumor has it that this time it was actually Marvel slash Disney oh, shit. that made the call to cancel Daredevil. And in fact, Daredevil was the fourth most demanded show by viewers on Netflix. But just behind Narcos, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina and Stranger Things, all Netflix shows, Daredevil was. So Netflix probably wasn't going planning on canceling Daredevil. They, did you just read? I don't. Did you actually read the article? I did. Did you? I didn't. I didn't gather what you just gathered out of it. It says it right here. In the article. <laughs> oh, I love this. There was another article that that mentioned that that rumor that it was because uh, there's a quote in here where yeah. it says, "Get him, Anthony." While Netflix ponied up for production costs for the Marvel shows, the streamlining the streaming service had zero ownership stake in the IP. That limited upside was acceptable until Marvel's parent Disney announced next year's launch of Disney Plus, a direct rival to Netflix that will have Marvel Studios content as a flagship in its formidable arm- armada. I mean, it was also the thing that they Netflix wanted them to shorten the seasons, right? And that and Disney was like, "No, fuck you. We want to get our money's worth." Uh, Whatever it is, it's it's clear that this is being canceled because not because of anything other than the fact that Disney. It's now clear that D- N- Disney's streaming service is the reason why this is all it wasn't away. completely it wasn't viewer ratings, ratings it wasn't viewer viewers. data yeah it's the fact that netflix and disney don't want to be in bed with each other anymore they're breaking up they are breaking, breaking up. up so this is a breakup this is very clearly now that yes this is a hard breakup but i mean we, so expect to you know enjoy punisher the they're next all, season of punisher gone. next season of jessica jones and just expect a month later for them to be like well we're done and, you know, the Marvel did make some comment that, like, Daredevil will be back in some form. 
whether it's going to be Charlie Cox or any of these people, probably not. I don't think so. Uh, but we will have last two seasons of these shows to enjoy. And then this whole that whole universe is going to be dead. Meanwhile, Netflix t- <laughs> says Friends is ending in January. People lose their shit on social media. Oh, people love people Friends. going. I got Netflix just so I could watch Friends over and over again. And now Netflix through uh we'll keep friends through next year for a hundred million dollar agreement oh shit wow which they only paid 30 million dollars a year previously for the streaming licenses for friends is huge man Holy all shit. my friends still watch friends they'll fucking cancel daredevil but they'll fucking keep paying a hundred million dollars for friends friends trivia is big i guess yeah. so so you gotta you gotta research listen that's back in the day when nipples could be a uh, showing at all times Throughout Yo, your, Jennifer uh, Aniston shirts. was extremely hot and attractive and funny. They were all were. Uh, Dude, they did like they literally had like their nipples popping <laughs> through their shirts all the time. So the, nobody that, said anything. Is that out or back in? Can you do that now? Can I you? Are nips girls good? are taking back their bodies and you could go bra no, on TV? Now. No, never now. No nips on TV no, not, anymore? Not anymore. All the cleavage you want. You just can't show nips throwing, showing oh. through your thing. I don't know. I thought, I thought girls were like, we can we don't need to wear bras. I've seen some of those girls. All yeah, right. I've on seen TV? No, not on TV. In real life. In IRL? In real life. Oh, fuck yeah. IRL. Oh, in real life, you know, that, 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 that's different. Man, yeah. I missed the 90s when there was nips everywhere. Oh, shit. <laughs> I wonder if I could. Was there a link? I gotta get Jennifer uh, Aniston was like before my time. Like, yeah. I never got. No? I never was watching Friends and into like prime Jennifer Aniston. I think she's very pretty, yeah. but I never was like, wow. Like. She wasn't the babe ever for me. She's smoking hot, and then her comedic timing just like made her sexier to me. That she's she very she's pretty. actually I'm funny. Jennifer yeah, dude. I, I, I got a link that, for that, you here. That, the Rachel, the haircut. I mean, the haircut is iconic. Who doesn't remember the Rachel haircut? What's the Rachel haircut? It's just like that straight bob down. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. There you go. Look at oh, this. Let me look at Let's it. look at some nipples. Uh, so if you search oh, whoa, nipples nip. on Friends listener in Google, holy crap! Wow. You can see Jennifer Aniston's nipples in every fucking wow, shot. They all, none of these women wear bras. Holy, do you think those are prosthetic or those are real? Just Google know. nipples on Friends. Nipples DLC. on Friends is a great Google search. Well done, Rux. <laughs> I mean, I've learned that girls don't like wearing bras. Well, it's restrictive. I don't blame them. Yeah. Would you like to wear a tiny bag for your balls all the day? No, it doesn't make any sense. Why well, I, I wear see, I don't wear boxers. <laughs> the, oh. I wear boxer briefs. Yeah, I, I like to wear socks. I'm on, I'm oh, on you don't want to ask socks. about my underwear game. Look, you could Trust see me. you could see little nipples on his feet. <laughs> I like showing my feet nipples. <laughs> nipples. 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 <laughs> uh, this just came out today. Did you guys see the first teaser for Game of Thrones season eight? Oh, I know I did. The, the horns click this link. Oh, oh my god, Imran, you're way over hyping this fucking it's a, teaser. It's not. It's not. There's no footage. It's a conceptual <laughs> fucking symbolic teaser. It's the the map in Daenerys's uh, throne room yeah. with fire coming up it's one cool. side and ice coming yes. on the other and it clashing in the middle but it's uh interesting I mean, it's cool yeah. it's a cool graphic yeah. it's not there's nothing to be like oh this is a, no there's no oh my god i gotta watch this there's plenty of juicy symbolism i'm still scrolling through nipple pictures that's fine frost spreads over uh it's the gift that keeps the map up. as you hear the white walker thing the frost goes over a wolf map marker and then a dragon map marker and then on the other part of the map you see fire Engulf a Lannister lion map marker, and then the ice and fire fucking meet in the middle. Didn't so, I just say that? Yeah, but it's important. <laughs> What's important is what side, what the ice is going over, and what the ah, fire yeah. is going over. All right. In terms of what's going to happen, yeah, it is it is a tease. I mean, in the, in the ultimate sense that, of the word. That is a real teaser trailer. <laughs> it is a real tease. But I feel like the symbolism they're showing here, uh, it means something if you choose to uh, look into it. Final season, April 19th. It's April. April. Then it'll all be over. Thanks to Jess Rivera, by the way, for posting that in the group. Last thing in the news before we take a quick break. Just want to alert the listener when this show posts. The CWDC crossover will be starting on the Sunday. It's three episodes. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Starts with Flash, Arrow, ends with Supergirl. What are they crossing over now? Monday, you know? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. No, I'm saying what? What's the storyline? It's Elseworld. So at oh, the okay. end of the last episodes of Supergirl and The Flash... It jumps. You see this uh, cut scene and it says Earth 90, right? And then the the camera pans over all these dead heroes, different versions of these DC dead heroes. The Flash is John Wesley's ship in his 
Flash costume from the 90s TV show. He's crawling out of the rubble. He's going for this book. As he gets this book, you see these hands reach down, pick up the book. It's the fucking anti-monitor. Oh, shit. And he's like, you failed. You, you failed your, your, your world. He opens the book. This light comes out. John Wesley ship runs right into the camera. You see his Flash logo, and it cuts to black. So basically, in this Elseworlds, uh, Grant Gustin's Barry Allen is Oliver Queen. Oh, yeah. I Stephen I Amell is playing uh, Oliver Queen. So and that's the first Barry episode of the Allen. crossover? That'll be Flash. Yes, on Sunday, it starts with Flash, the Flash episode. Why is the Flash on Sunday? They're changing the order of these shows just for this one week. Point oh. is, you guys, we should watch it so we can talk about it next week. And I don't think you need to watch the show. The only one I'm watching is Flash. I'm not watching Arrow or Supergirl, but I think you could because you're gonna see uh, fucking Batwoman and Gotham and all. And I can't uh, the the switch the Elseworlds fucking switch seems kind of cool. Oh, you know what? I, I I'll reveal it on the show. Okay. I'm not going to be on the show next week. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> you and me, Rugs. we're going to talk about the DCCW crossover. Next Thursday, next I leave week. to go to Vancouver. Oh, that's right. The Vancouver trip. Yeah. So Listen, uh, I'm going to give you a list to uh, one of these uh, dispensaries uh, items. Okay, Just, you uh, got it. You know, check sure, list, sure. go shopping if you can. Sure, yeah. sure. Is this, is this a work thing or is this oh, a this pleasure? Is pleasure. Oh. I'm checking out Vancouver. Wow. You've never yeah. been there. Never been there. All right, well. Come back with some stories and some STDs, Anthony. We're going to take a quick break <laughs> uh, to play some promos, and we'll be right back with more geeky audio right after this. After these messages, we'll be right back. Hey, my name is Paul, and I'm not an animal expert. I'm Donna, and I'm not an animal expert either. And together we do a podcast about animals called Varmints. Every week, we pick an animal, do a bunch of research on it, and bring you some interesting facts about that animal. But we don't stop there. We talk about that animal in movies, TV, and other pop culture. And we talk about whether or not the animal would make a tasty dish, and how intelligent we think that animal is on a scale of 1 to 10. It's exactly like one of those fancy PBS nature documentaries. Except not at all like that really in any way. We're on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts from. And we're at BlazingCaribouStudios.com. Hey, listener. Dutch here from Voice from the Underground, the podcast. My co-host and I want to invite you to check out our little corner of the podcast verse. At Voice from the Underground, we talk about all the crazy <laughs> happening around us and try to make a little bit of sense out of the nonsense with little to no results. If the idea of hearing three semi-intelligent, outspoken nerds talk about politics, social issues, current events, sports, movies, pretty much anything that we decide to talk about because, well, it's our show, appeals to you, grab your shovel and come on down to the underground and then consult a qualified psychotherapist. Find us wherever you get your podcasts, just not where you buy your weed. Boys from the underground. Doc, 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 and nerd. Hey, listener, if you have been enjoying the show and you want to support the show and you want more content, we have more content to give you. Just sign up to our awesome fan club at jockandair.com slash Patreon. You're helping the show out. There's a bunch of different tiers with lots of swag and different wards, but everybody gets a whole bonus podcast feed filled with post shows, instant reactions, whole episodes. And if you pay 10 bucks a month, you get to pick a movie for us to review. Oh, yeah. We love forcing Anthony to watch movies he love may it. not watch. It's always very interesting. We put out a couple of these reviews on the Patreon already. Keith and Den Kinker finally wrote in, and uh, here's what he says. He says, hey, guys, I finally figured out what movie I want you guys to review. It was one of my favorite movies as a kid, and it's probably my favorite superhero team. I would <laughs> like to hear you guys review the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie from 1995. Oh, shit. I could do Ninjetti. that. Jetty. I could do that tomorrow. Really? Oh, yeah. See, because Seth Morgan thought you'd have a different reaction. He immediately, yeah, he I, immediately I, posted, okay, if you do this, I'm lighting myself on fire. Anthony will most likely join me. And then I right. I responded as a kid. That was one of my favorite movies. So this this is like your this is like Space Jam to you, right? It kind of hits you in oh, the same dude. area. When when they were when they announced, I was watching Mighty Morphin Power Rangers weekly. Yeah, I remember being sad because it was the end of the run. Yeah, or like the I didn't realize that it was the end of that the season of Mighty Morphin Power, and there was something else was on. Yeah, and I was pissed at my parents. I was like, 
why isn't this show on? I was like, cr- I was like throwing a fit. Like, what the fuck is <laughs> going fuck on? Fuck you, Dad. Where's my right. Power Rangers? Why is it? Why is it not on right now? Like, I was, I was hooked. Did the movie that, come out while the show was coming out or after yeah. it? Oh, it was during while the run. The show. Okay. So when the movie came out, I mean, I was. This was like stand in line. Wow. Like type stuff for me. So I've never seen this movie. Uh, I don't think so. Oh, I've seen I'm it. I'm looking forward to this. It is very cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. It's but, pretty uh, bad. This yeah. pick split uh, the nation a As little bit. As a kid, bit. though, I loved it. I wa- Dude, I'll watch it. You're giving us money? Absolutely. It's- Remember um, Apocalypse in X-Men Apocalypse? Yeah. You'll see who That's they drew the guy, their inspiration Ivan from. That's yeah. the Ivan <laughs> yeah. So this fucking pick really di- divided our, our nation members. Blake Braden's like, yo, that's the movie right there. Uh, followed by David Zika going, it starts GoFundMe to pay Jock and not to review anything Power Rangers. <laughs> So, Glenn Smith was also in on it. Glenn Smith. So it definitely depends how old you he were. Was, yeah, yeah. It depend. It really depends on if you were young and grew up watching this. Because if you did I not was like not this, a, I was not a Power Rangers fan. Yeah. Uh, because I knew about the Sentai series, Super Sentai, uh, right? Yeah. So um, I was like, ah, this is an Americanized shit it's for kid. It's really kiddie, my Power but, Rangers like, was fucking Specter Man back in the day when I was mm-hmm. little and Ultraman. I remember showing my uncle who was like. He came from the Philippines, loved like action martial yeah, arts yeah, movies. I'm yeah. like, as a kid, again, mind you, I'm a kid. Yeah. I'm like, Uncle Tito, let, well, <laughs> watch this show. <laughs> it's legit martial arts. I put on Power Rangers for him. <laughs> did he laugh? What did he say? He, he um, placates me and watched the whole thing. Yeah. I'm like, what'd you think? He's like, it's it's terrible martial arts. <laughs> 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 he like ruined my hopes and dreams. I'm like, what? He told you. That's like telling you Santa's not real. <laughs> The whole show, like he sat through the whole thing, which I commend him for. At least for, he watched it. Being a a forty year old man yeah. at the time watching yeah. Power Rangers yeah. was probably really awful. That's gonna be me. <laughs> That's gonna be me too. Uh, did anybody see the new one? Rugs, you see that there's one? A, there's a new one. No, yeah, the, I did. the I reboot, saw it. like the newer version. I saw the new Power uh, Rangers movie. Did you see no. that, Anthony? Anybody had no no no, uh, no. desire I, to see, see I, that? No. This, like this film, the film, this film was basically the cap to my Power Rangers fandom. I see. It's where it ended. Like. Once all these these characters went away, yeah. I stopped watching. Oh, okay, because like, they yeah, kept yeah. rejiggering like who the right, actors right, and right. actresses. It's like Menudo. I like the original Menudo, and then they kept switching the fucking fifth guy. It's not the same. I did like Kimberly. I thought she was. She's very cute. And then uh, Jason was the uh, the Green Ranger. the Green Ranger, and then he becomes the White Ranger. And then did he get in trouble with the law? He's still around doing something. Yeah, he's still uh, he still makes his name for himself here. Good pick, Keith and Denkinger. Thanks for your support. We we'll will do it. We'll throw it in uh, the 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 list there. I legitimately, I looked up Keith, and I, I legitimately, yeah. I don't think he's trying to troll. I think he yeah. really was like, this is something. Yeah. I would be interested in hearing you guys here. Oh, absolutely, talk about. absolutely. Why not? Uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. It is uh, also a new episode of Jock Talk. Uh, check that out. Jockadare Pick Club. Me and Chaz are talking about the college football playoff. So Okay, right on. Get on there. Uh, what about the Felty League playoffs? Oh, we'll get to that later. Jockadare.com slash Patreon. News from the nation time. It's time for news from the nation. It's time for news from the nation. <laughs> Yes, Wet Farts done live. That's production, people. <laughs> you, we both did it at the same time. We had the same idea. Somebody said a wet fart <laughs> would go perfect at the end of that clip. There you go. That's that's the new drop. That's how the new I, drop ends. I didn't I'm realize, actually farting. I didn't realize oh. that was live. That I was, was like, live, oh. not recorded. We both did it at the same time. That was <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. Okay, it's enough of the new farts. <laughs> wet fart is the perfect end. Uh, fiddlesticks, pace this article crazy rich asians bombs at china box office opening to 1.2 million oh shit i watched this movie yesterday guys let's let's hear what you thought of it i fucking love this movie it's, it's, it's pretty good it's, right? it was very charming very well written and i could relate to so much of it being a you know pakistan immigrant to pakistani immigrant parents born here you could have made that movie with brown people and you'd only have to change a few things and it would have been exactly the same from, you know, your parents trying to con- your mom trying to control their son's life. And the, 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 the son's kind of being mom's boy. I can relate to that shit. The whole thing about you're not Chinese, you're a Chinese American. Uh, 
Even the British accents. I have so many relatives overseas that are, all have British accents. And a lot of them don't even live in fucking England. That's just the education system. They're all taught by Brits. Uh, oh, great movie. I, I, I understand a sequel is in the works. Yep. Really enjoyed it in a, a great way. Like, I, I, I related to a lot of it, but I could see how um, some things were, like, really Chinese, but really not really. The one weird thing was, like, the guards were, like, Sikh. Indian dudes were the guards to the mansion in Singapore. There's some. There's a lot of Indian Sikhs yeah, in like, Singapore. Yeah, that's like Singapore looks fucking dope too, man. Singapore looks cool. I kind of I loved Aquafina as her best friend. Uh, no, li, li, what's her name? Pate Lake Leek Ping Lei Ping. Uh, oh, hilarious, hilarious, and Constance Wu from uh, Fresh Off the Boat. She's she's amazing. Uh, anyways, it's uh, is you it, can by the way you can check my review out on yes, Patreon. We did an instant reaction. Uh, I did. Well, oh, please. you did like a whole review, didn't you? I did an instant reaction, yeah. I'm waiting for it to come on cable. Now, is it ironic, though, having seen the movie, it's not really that surprising that it bombed at the Chinese box office. First of all, it came out like three months later. Yeah. Like, it just came out. And what were we just talking about, Anthony? The last thing Chinese people want to see is like the Chinese stuff they're surrounded with every day. Like, they know yeah. this shit. They love American shit. Are you surprised that this thing bombed at all? I wasn't surprised. I mean, I wasn't. I didn't expect it, but it's not a surprising thing either. I mean, again, very late release in yeah. China. Let me let me po- pose this question to Go you. Ahead. Would you run to the theater to watch a a movie about Chicago that was filmed <laughs> by people not from this country? Right, like exactly. good Chicago. Good, yes, that's made by yes. Good, that may, you know that would be yeah, a movie that's, like that's Bollywood. The same would thing. Make. Yeah. Well, and you also with Indian throw in, people. You know, they've seen stuff like this before. Yeah. You've also got the fact that you've you've, you've casted a f- couple characters that aren't Chinese that to play Chinese, Chinese roles. Yeah. You know, like yeah. what's his face, um, dude from uh, the Asian dude from Hangover. Oh, Ken, Ken Jong. Ken Jong. He's Korean. Yeah, yeah. they got to play a Chinese guy. Like the Chinese people. And that's actually about. something that they that they look at over there. Yes. Right. Like you know, when you're in a different country and you're like a minority, you band together. You're like, okay, we're all Asian. Right. And so we're all Asian Americans. But over there, they're like, no, that we're not. You know, what are they doing? That guy's right. Korean. Uh, one of the the one of the girls is a Japanese. She's playing a Chinese person. Like, yeah, yeah. Some of that stuff yeah. that matters over there. Yeah. Also. And I brought this up earlier in my Asian American art. The movie is is about being Asian American. It's for American in, audiences in a in a Chinese dominated culture. Chinese people don't give a fuck about yes. what, what it means to be an Asian American yes. in their culture. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a, there's there's things when you dissect it that make you go, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense. Who else Dom was great there. in this movie? You got Ken Jeong was great. The guy uh, from Superstore who played Oliver, the the gay cousin. He's from Superstore. He's hilarious. And then G Jin Yang from fucking uh, Silicon Valley playing this character, Bernard, who is hilarious. Bernard is awesome. Uh, but uh, they're all great. But again, man, I could see this movie with all fucking brown people, with Indian people. You got like the Indian fuck boys on one side. And like it's the same, the same shit what happened. It's a cute. It's a very well done heart. Movie. So John Bellotti posted uh, some of his thoughts about why this would bomb. He he comments, some Chinese moviegoers commented on the pandering to the push for inclusion and diversity in front of the camera. One person was quoted as, quote, this movie should make Americans happy. And some felt it wasn't a good representation of them on screen. All of these well, things. Makes, it kind of makes I sense. I can understand. Yes, absolutely. All these things I can understand. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they I don't think they were expecting a big market. But the movie is made for an American audience. To introduce them. It's about an American the, yes, going over the there. Chinese culture. Great movie, though. Highly recommended. It's out on VOD. It's like, remember Rumble in the Bronx when it was filmed in uh, Toronto? Oh, my God. They said it was the Bronx. <laughs> and everybody was in, in New York is like, not, not the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> Rumble in the Bronx. As a kid, I thought that movie was awesome, too. And I had no idea that wasn't in the Bronx. <laughs> Here's a, I got an article that kind of ties this back um, to Spider-Man oh. Far From Home, saying that it may be possible that they're already setting up to introduce Shang-Chi that we were just talking about because Crazy Rich Asian star Remy He, who played, uh, who did he play? One, wait, one quick thing. Yeah. Rumble in the Bronx, I just Wikipedia'd it. Yeah. Filmed in Vancouver. <laughs> Not <laughs> even close. 
I thought it was in Toronto. Wait, even worse. There's a Bronx in Vancouver? <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, hey, where are there mountains here? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's quite hilly for a fucking uh, Vancouver. He plays uh, Alistair. Alistair Cheng in Crazy Rich Asians. Uh, the, is the guy played by Remy He, who is also cast in Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, Remy He has also underwent martial arts training for the role of Prince Jing Jim in the Netflix Kung Fu series Marco Polo. He's Malaysian Chinese descent. Uh, mm. And he's a fan. He's an actor that fans have been interested to playing Shang-Chi. It's possible that this guy is playing the guy who's going to be Shang-Chi in, in Spider-Man Far From Home. That would be interesting. They were thinking about this hmm. uh, this far ahead. So that, Whoa. that ties in Crazy Rich Asian Spider-Man and Shang-Chi in a nice little. And we're going to get a, we're apparently we're getting a Spider-Man Far From Home trailer. Yes. Saturday, Saturday and Avengers Friday and Sunday will be Godzilla King of Monsters. It's going to be a crazy weekend for some fucking trailers coming up. Strap yourselves in, you fuck. Uh, another trailer time. Trailer time. Stra- uh, another listener, Whip. group member <laughs> Raymond. L- I'm just gonna play. It. Strap yourselves in, you fucks. Spoiler time. I'm not spoiling anything. I just love hearing Rug Boy do that. Uh, Raymond Lou, listener and jock and nerd group member, has seen Aquaman. People. Oh shit! Wow. Here is his initial thoughts. They are not spoilery. I like what he says here. He says, "I saw the movie last week on a special sneak preview." Don't front on this movie. I think it's better than Wonder Woman in terms of plot pacing and action. Momoa is charismatic. Amber Heard is amazing as Mira, who holds her own as an equal. The costumes are literally lifted right out of the comics, and seeing Ocean Master in full costume is breathtaking. The story is a mix of Arthur's origin and an Indiana Jones film, and the action is stunning with the various factions of underwater kingdoms. The only issue I have is that during Arthur's flashbacks with Vocal, played by William Dafoe, the CGI to make him look younger is kind of creepy. So clearly Warner Brothers does not have the I same. I think it's just William Defoe's face. Yes, William Defoe. I don't he think you can't have, make him less creepy. He does have a face that looks like a straight leather. Somebody else had that picture of him and Michael Sarah as the live action cast for Rick and Morty. And it's fucking perfect. Like, I don't know how you de-creepy his face. Like, there's too much creep going on. Or maybe uh, DC doesn't have the same tech. Fucking MCU does smooth things I'm happy to hear that it's gotten he uh, we got a listener that says it's good Uh, that's exciting I saw I saw Amber Heard on some talk shows and she was talking about why she took this role and it was specifically because uh it's not a damsel in distress and she gets to do a lot of badass warrior shit and the character you know spoke to her as having agency so I was like well that's cool that you know she's like otherwise I don't do this kind of shit but she did it because of that uh and speaking again back to China The movie technically has already opened in fucking China. It opens December 7th. So they have preview numbers. It's already made $1.2 million on the Thursday preview in China, which is very good. It's the second biggest preview number for a DC film behind Batman versus Superman. And just over under the likes of Thor Ragnarok, which had 1.2 million justice league, 1.1 guardians of the galaxy. So, it's already, uh, I wonder how China's going to, they should probably love it. I think they're going to love this spectacle. It's and it's interesting that they've opened this already so early in China, unlike Crazy Rich Asians that <laughs> waited three months and it hurt them. So that's kind of smart, I think. Hmm. I think so. I think it's a I mean, smart that's thing. Good. That's good to hear, though. Yeah. Hopefully, I'm, hopefully this movie, yeah. um, when does it even come out? 21st, December oh, 21st. All right. Uh, but before that, we're going to get Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse the week before. That, that's next week, right? That's the 14th, correct? Wow. A lot of shit coming out. Uh, now we got to go to the movies. We got to go to the movies. The sp- I've, I saw something on Spider-Verse. Uh, one of the guys I follow, Brown Table on yes. YouTube. Oh, Brown Table is great. Yeah. He uh, In his headline, he goes, this is the best Spider-Man ever. On oh, the shit. Best Spider-Man film ever. I believe it's still at 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. I'll yeah. be interesting to see where he, that goes. He says it's not the best version of Peter Parker, but it, it captures the, the quote, essence like of what, Spider-Man. What the essence of what Spider-Man is if that this that what the character well, I is. think because Miles is like the are the lead like Miles, it's a Miles lead, movie yeah. and this is a great way to right. introduce Miles Morales if it's done right and it sounds like they did a right rugs have an open mind when you go in to see this please it for me <laughs> just for me <laughs> please you want me to like this movie no. I will, listen I, I probably will like yeah. it for what it is yeah. but I still have my opinions about it I don't know. That bad? No. 
That's Rug Boy. That's Rug Boy. We wouldn't have it any other way. Rug Boy, will you like something for a change? That was the the running theme. Yes, last week uh, yeah. on our roast, that was great. Yeah. I like things. I like, he likes occasional. I just, things. I'm not gonna just be like, oh, ignore it, like big problems. I'm gonna say, okay, it's good, but it's got problems. Speaking of our last episode, David Zika checking in on the Facebook group with some comments from our uh, last episode's conversation about. Uh, action icon stars in the 80s. Uh, Anthony asked us when, you know, in the 80s, who was the main guy? Uh, Zika said, you guys forgot Chuck Norris. <laughs> Though he really started in the 70s. I know he has become a cliche, but he actually has world-class fight credentials. He does. And yeah, dude, I was reading up on Chuck Norris. He went to the Marines, came out of the Marines, started fucking learning martial arts. Uh, he has several black belts. In different he things, he's fucking yeah, but legit. Were you watching Chuck Norris movies? Yes, I'll tell you what. I was into the Missing in Action movies, which were the uh, these movies were made by Canon, Globus, and Go- like Golem. Eighteen, basically. Yeah, really shitty, low budget. The, Chuck Norris made so much money for Canon with his man, Missing in Action series, and then Delta Force, which came out later in the eighties. I love fucking Delta Force. Uh, the first one, the other two weren't bad, but. I was, and I think I watched the the cartoon. He had a cartoon on Saturday morning. You watched the Chuck Norris cartoon? I did, because he was badass. He was kicking things. And then don't forget, he was Walker, Texas Ranger for like 12 years. That's how I remember. And he was in Sidekicks. And he was in Sidekicks, which I love. So One of my all-time favorite Chuck Norris things, though, is him fighting Bruce Lee in, uh, was it Way of the Dragon? Uh, Yes, it was. uh, Was it Enter the Dragon? No, Way of the Dragon. Way of the Dragon? No. Yeah. That fight's awesome. It's Way of the Dragon. That was like one of his early, one of his early scenes, yeah. one of his uh, early roles. It was, a, it was a good fight too because it kind of showcases both of their styles, like legitimately. I really enjoyed Way that. of the Dragon. Also, I never saw like Lone Wolf McQuaid, which apparently was a big movie for him. I never was a big Chuck Norris guy though. I I didn't like mustaches on. <laughs> that was always uh, it was a turn off. That was rug. my thing. It's like I I had, I, I, I couldn't be into guys. Unless they were clean shaven. <laughs> you know, that was the thing. Like, they had to be ripped and they had to be clean shaven. Otherwise, I didn't think that they had, they were. Sh- like, I literally, if the phys- it, like if they were skinny, I would be like, I'm not watching this guy. He's not he's not strong. And then so, like, I would look for, like, a strong dude. Like, Sh- that's why I love Schwarzenegger. Yeah. He was huge. Yeah. He didn't kinda, have a mustache. I was kind of the same way. I wasn't into, I didn't think anyone looking skinny yeah. was legit. Yeah. He was a tiny guy, but he packed a punch. And then the Chuck Norris facts were hilarious. And then eventually those turned into Jack Bauer from 24 facts. Uh, but that whole meme, remember that? In like, oh, five. That shit was fucking funny. Chuck, oh, the, the Chuck Norris facts were Chuck Norris so facts funny. are the best. Chuck Norris wears ultra ribbed condoms inside out for his pleasure. <laughs> and then oh, we can do this all day. I know. I'm not going to look these up because that's going to be distracting. You want to know what he's been doing lately? In, it's old. In he is right now he is uh seventy eight. Uh in twenty eighteen. Holy shit. In twenty eighteen, he did a commercial for a Finnish hamburger chain. And then he did a commercial for Cerveza Poker. And he did a commercial for Toyota. That's how he's been keeping himself busy. Whoa. So uh yeah, no, Chuck Norris, great pick. And then Zika also added this. I learned some shit. He said FYI. Webner is the real life. It is. Well, everybody knows that's, Chuck Webner. I tell us about Chuck life. Webner. I did not know about this guy. Anthony, you're the fight guy. I don't know like the full full story, but I know that he was a guy that was a kind of a journeyman um, white boxer that was that fought Muhammad Ali and um, gave him a really tough run, yeah. much tougher than anyone would have expected. Yeah. And Stallone did see that story, and he based Rocky Inspired. off of it. Yeah, and. Uh, Chuck Webner ended up like suing him. And oh. I think he had ended up paying some some of it. To, he like, was from Bayonne, New Jersey. They call him the yeah. Bayonne the, Bleeder. The Bayonne Bleeder. The yeah, Bayonne, he's, he's so he as. learned to fight in the streets, a lot like Rocky. I think they wanted to give him a part in one of the movies, but it didn't happen. Uh, but there's a movie called Chuck. Yes, I heard. I got. I kind of want to watch this. About I've seen it. It's pretty it's good. good. He's still alive too. Right. He's 79 yeah. years old. I did not know. Webner also remember Rocky Three when. Yeah. Uh, Rocky fights Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Webner did it first. He fought Andre the Giant. Right. That's right. And so all of this, like, inspired Stallone to write this movie. Uh, Some of the details about this Ali fight in 75 are amazing. He spent eight weeks near the Catskill Mountains training, kind of like Rocky does. Uh, This is the first time Webner had been able to fight full time. 
uh, before the fight, a reporter asked him, uh, w- w- do you think you can survive? He's like, I've been a survivor my whole life. If I survive the Marines, I can survive Ali. In the ninth round, Webner scores a fucking knockdown. Oh, shit. Which Ali said happened because he was stepping on his foot. <laughs> Webner <laughs> went to his corner and said to his manager, Al, start the car. We'll go into the bank. We are millionaires. <laughs> to which Webner's manager replied, you better turn around. He's getting up and he looks pissed. In the <laughs> remaining rounds, Ali decisively outboxes Webner. Opened up cuts above both Webner's eyes, broke his nose. Webner was far behind on the score scorecards when Ali knocked him down with 19 seconds left in the 15th round. Referee counted to seven before calling a technical knockout. He almost went fucking full 15 rounds with fucking Muhammad Ali and, and yeah. knocked him out once. That's hell of a, that's the story. What that a story. Rocky. What a story. I got to check out Chuck. Thanks for Zika turning me on. I did not There's know. A, about there Chuck might be a documentary. Yeah, it's called too. Chuck. Yeah, there you go. Well, there's a movie. Oh, that's and a then movie. That, it's not a documentary. Yeah, it's okay. a movie. Uh, yeah, starring, uh, what's his name? Liev Schreiber. I love when I can oh, learn yeah. about uh, new stuff. So that was fun, Zika. Jason Dutch, voice on the underground. Let's post this on our group. Hey, Nation, I have a Twitter poll. I'd like feedback from you experts. Which 80s movie do you most slash least want a remake of? He lists Goonies, The Last Starfighter, War Games, Never Ending Story, Weird Science, he says, this is one of our topics for this week's show, so I appreciate any feedback. Sorry, Jason, we're stealing this. You did post it in our group, but right. it was inspired by us talking about Back to the Future and should they remake? And I was like, fuck no, don't remake this. Don't touch Back to well, the Future. Well, there's so many movies that they could remake. I don't think they should make a, a successful movie like Goonies. No, don't touch no. Goonies. That's my if least. Something don't do that it. Was, is, so, but there's so many movies that are like, bad that could be made so much better now yes. that they should maybe attack yes like remember super mario brothers yes oh, what yeah. a shit fucking you do movie it good do like a legit mario yeah. Movie. yeah that was real bad or double dragon i mean there's tons of those why don't they do masters of the universe well they're doing right? that that's coming out uh they're doing that why don't you guys they master you, got, you guys have a pick from what he put put so the last Starfighter sticks out. It is his pick for our Patreon review. And if you've never seen it, it's, it takes place in the 80s. I don't remember it that I lo- much. I, I love this movie. It. I I I used to love when this movie was on. This guy's really good at a console video game. Turns out this video game was sent by this alien race that's in the middle of a war and they needed a pilot. And his skills attracted him and they took him up to fight. Now imagine you do this with like Fortnite right now. Like Fortnite was a game sent from the future to recruit. It's like Ender's game. There's yeah. also a show like that on Hulu called Future Man, in which this guy's playing a video game and it's a game sent from the future and to recruit people, these guys come and it's a hilarious fucking comedy. Yeah. War games, I don't know if you war games work because of like the Cold War and the weird tension in the uh uh early computer era. Never ending story. I don't want you to touch that. That's one of my favorite fucking stories. Yeah, do not unless unless you do Sebastian's kids. And now Sebastian has lost kind of like Hook. He's lost his imagination. He doesn't believe the kid finds this book, starts reading it. He's in the book. He's got to save his dad. Falcor's there. Atreyu's there. They're all there. I don't know any of these movies. Weird Science. Sure. Val Kilmer. I mean, the, I've movie. heard of the Goonies. I think I've seen... Weird Never science they wouldn't be able to do properly. It's very politically incorrect. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Anthony, it would be like getting a weak sauce weird science. Anthony, we are, we are going to watch. Uh, you're going to be forced to watch The Last Starfighter. Right. But I would recommend watching Goonies, War Games, Never Ending Story. Those are great I think movies. I've seen Never Ending Story. I just don't remember it. That I don't even know what it's about. Of the Navigator. Never Ending. It's about a kid who reads a book yeah. and then gets sucked into the book. And oh. then thinks he's a you know, he's a little he's, kid who gets picked on and he hides in the school and he's reading this book and then he realizes slowly that the what he's reading the people can hear him and it reacts and they know about him and it freaks him out. It's really good. It's an amazing fantasy tale. The nothing and the flying falcon. Part with the horse gets me every yes, time. Yes, it's so sad. Atreyu's fucking death is so sad. Our oh tag. Atreyu, Falcor. It's great. Ah, uh, thanks, Jason, for letting us steal this topic. Uh, yeah, sorry I couldn't but comment. But there's, I there's really our seen picks. any of these movies. You have our picks. Yeah, I, I put a big list of movies, and I rattled a couple of them off, but I put a bunch of movies there, uh, suggestions of movies that could be improved by today's technology. Those are, those are all great movies. Join the join the group, listener. Uh, yeah. Jess Rivera, join the group. Jess Rivera shared a link to a trailer to a superhero movie with this comment. Who's got a Patreon movie review out to them? The movie in question. This is so fucking great. It's called 2.0. It is 
Bollywood's uh, it's gotta oh, be my God, their not... first superhero movie. Did you guys have a chance to check this trailer out? No. I, I think I saw it. Holy I shit. Not. I'll it's, watch it as you guys just talk click it. The, it. the movie is about cell phones getting sucked into the air and then becoming sentient cell phone creatures attacking India and they have a superhero in the form of a robot named Chitty and there's a whole bunch of them now, here's the thing about why I love this, because I did grow up watching Bollywood movies. My parents were immigrants from Pakistan, and Devon Avenue was notorious for pirated Bollywood musical movies. And so I would watch all that shit. And I don't know if it's still like this, but from when I watched it, Bollywood movies, there's no genre. There's just one genre. They're largely all the same. There's singing, there's dancing, there's romance, there's fighting, the... The leads kiss, but you never see him like explicitly have sex or be even somewhat naked. But there's amazing like fight choreographed chase scenes and the guy always it's all every fucking movie's the same. And for the longest time I'm like, they don't they don't have any genres. Like, why don't they make like a horror movie or a science fiction movie? But they know their audience. This fucking it's a huge industry. Motherfuckers on set, they'll shoot six movies at once, some of these people. This is the output. So to see this is cool to see all this CGI. Uh, at work because also listen, you, are, you may or may not know worst. people Indian people are really good with computers have you noticed that there's a reason they are very intelligent and there's a lot of viz dev houses visual effects work being sent to India right now on all these major movies uh, and they're really good at it so for them to put it to use on their own thing this looks so fucking funny I really want to watch it because it has everything a superhero movie has but they still have like the toupee looking Indian uncle hair and glasses. You <laughs> can be, you can be, you should do market. You can do promoting for it. Dude, I can sell the shit out of this movie. Terrible. Look, this movie looks bad. awful. It's very bad, but this is not something I would ever be excited about. But this is what, like, the campiness, like, it sounds so bad. A.R. Rahman. And, is and great. I just He's watched it. Yes. It looks terrible. No, it's not a good movie. I didn't say it was good. I said, Good on India for trying to make fucking genre wow, wow. Wow, yeah, Rugs, what do you think about the this? The bar is so low for you. Well, I've seen stuff like yeah. this before. Yeah. Like uh, sometimes like uh, Jose and I would send each other like just the most ridiculous contrived action scenes yeah. Yeah. ever. I think that this is one of yeah. them. This came out. Th- there's been things like this before yeah. where yeah. it's just like over the top cartoony. It reminds me a little bit of like uh, uh, Kung Fu Hustle. Yes. You know, where it's just out of the, just crazy shit. But um, I really don't. <laughs> I could just watch the action scenes and that and be happy with that. I don't really need to watch the rest of it. Um, I don't know. It's like for me, like this whole prepackaged kind of movie thing yeah. where there's a musical number and everything and everything like that. I'm like, I, I, I don't know. I think it's limiting. Prepare so I'm not chitty. really. Well, I don't know if this movie would have like songs in it. Like they're trying to do a legit like superhero. <laughs> It looks silly. That's, but that's kind of what I love. The, I would love those over-the-top contrived action scenes when I was a kid. Like, I remember yeah. so I remember those vividly, and they're so goofy. It seems like a goofy comedy. Yeah, type. so uh, it looks like fun. Uh, <laughs> we'll go to India and find out. <laughs> it looks like fun. I'm like, I'll be, I'll be going hey, you watch, to Mumbai. You let me know how much yeah. you like. We'll do. 2.0. And it's like, so, but even the name is something that they would name. Because, you know, it, sometimes they're a few years behind. And so... They're just getting like Internet 2.0. It's called 2.0. Uh, it's so generic and vague. It's hilarious. Side note, in this thread, Lisa Morrison found a loophole. And the Morrisons get to pick a Patreon movie. Oh, shit. Believe it or not. The loophole okay. being both Lisa and Steve give us five bucks. That's ten bucks in one household. I was like, uh, okay. Right. I'll allow it. You got me. Well done. Way to find the loophole. So uh, choose wisely. They're going to pick some obscure Canadian thing, I think, is what I thought. We have a shitload of movies still to review. Oh, yeah. We got like another 10. (laughs) Speaking of which, Brian Goff writes in with his suggestion. Here's what he writes. I really wish the guys would review this movie. He posts it with a poster of Teen Titans go to the movies. It's seriously hilarious. I understand there's animosity for fans of the original Teen Titans anime style show, but you got to just take it for what it is. This movie has a fucking Teen Titans go to the movies. Oh. This movie has a fucking Stan Lee cameo, too, actually. The movie pokes fun at DC and Marvel, but mostly DC. The cast and soundtrack are impressive, and there's Easter eggs galore. I'll just give one real quick. 
The movie starts off with a quick comic book page scrolling like Marvel does, only to pan out and to see it's a pigeon vastly reading a comic. Imran Anthony Rugboy, just check it out. Teen Titans go to the movies. All right. Uh, this is the same exact sales pitch that I got when Batman, the Lego Batman movie yes. came out. And I didn't even make it through that whole movie. So there's no fucking way the- uh, I'm going to make it through that movie. I have no animosity towards this film. I just I don't have any interest in going out of my way to see it. I mean, if it's on cable, I might catch it and, and eventually see it all. But I don't see myself sitting and watching the whole movie unless I'm really fucking bored. Brian Goff, if you give us 10 bucks, I'll watch it. There, that is, there's a way to ensure <laughs> that we do review this movie, Brian Goff. Me, I'm easy. You know I'll, I'll take your watch word this for it, movie. Though. If it's good and if you think it's funny, I'll take your word but for it. But if you really want to hear our thoughts, you know what to do. Jogginder.com says he's on the Patreon. Go up to the 10 bucks and uh, we can have have Rugboy sit through this torture. I think it'll be <laughs> hilarious. I don't care. I'll watch it, but I just, I'm not watching it, you know. Uh, for no reason. We'll give you a yeah. reason. Moving on, I got an email from Tane Reese, Chaco Tane. He says, Hi, voices. Here, oh, wait, just to re- re- refresh everyone's uh, memory, many, many months ago, uh, Tane Reese wrote in wanting to do like a Marvel trivia. Uh, trivia off. Remember that, guys? Right. He wanted to uh, go up against us. So he writes, Hi, voices. Here's the skinny Potsmiths. I've been smacking meat like Rocky, training for this Marvel trivia contest, reciting 168 Avengers and X Men real names as my warm up. Know who Magma is? I do. So let's do the damn thing. Give my life purpose, you pillow biters. I mean, I got you all 10 new nation ears in about 15 minutes. Imagine if I came on the show, how many more I'd pester to join. And sorry I didn't include you before. By all means, come join the fun. My vote to read the questions is... Yeah! (laughs) He didn't remember the name. He meant Mike Rips. Imagine the possibilities. I'll even come to you and do it face-to-face-to-face to to remote felty face. Choco Tane. P.S. I'm not a stalker. Although if I was, that's exactly what I'd say. Look, we owe Tane an appearance on the show for what he pays on the Patreon. Uh, Del Hauer also volunteered to do the questions to do, to host it to run it so we can all here. Let me let me say this. Yes, we can do something like this. It's not going to be the whole show. It's going to take it, some time and preparation. Also, yeah, and it's going to be it's got to be something that's maybe like a small segment. Not to say that they won't be funny, but it could get pretty boring <laughs> after a while. <laughs> Plus, if we're participating, we'll someone else needs to make the question. So maybe the nation. Can submit the questions once they submit enough questions. How many questions should this be? Uh, you know, I think we go five to ten. Yeah. Don't you do like? Don't you do trivia geeks all the time? Yeah. yeah. Why can't Why can't you come up with something? Because I, because I can't come up with the questions because I'll know the answers. So who's going to come up with the questions? I don't know. That's the problem. We yeah. need an independent party. We need that a third party fucking need, processing unit. We need an independent. Someone has to. That's the only problem. Chaco Tain is we don't know who's going to come up. We'll with figure the out the logistics. I love this idea. I want to do it. It's going to take some preparation. Yeah. But uh, Trivia Geeks is actually starting up. But that show, I have writers. There's two captains. There's what two if you guests. Just, what if you just look up a random comic book uh, questions uh, and sight unseen? Nobody knows what you're going to look Without up. Without seeing the answers. Until, yeah. We'll try something. Thanks. Like when we did a Godzilla quiz. Like we didn't know what the fuck we were looking at. We just did it. Yeah, but that way, I, wanna, I need a host. Whatever. We'll figure it out. Tell Howard. Write some questions, maybe, if you want to host it. Tane, we will get this done. It's going to take some time. Have, it's going to take time. Have yeah. patience, Wagwan. I guarantee you I will lose. <laughs> moving, Just like I did the Godzilla yeah, I'll probably lose, too. Uh, moving on, Ron Hans uh, wrote in today. He says, happy 251. Hey, guys. Sorry I couldn't get you something for the 250 episode. However, I'm sure my Patreon support is much better than me saying how much you guys suck, jokingly. The episode was great. However, one sports movie that was not said that I feel needs to be included with great sports movies is Tin Cup. Uh, that's that golf movie, Kevin Costner. Oh, John Cusack? Is that what that is? Oh, yeah, yeah. Tin Cup. I've never heard of it. Isn't that where they're air traffic controllers and they also play golf? That's Pushing Tin. Oh, Pushing Tin. I got my Tin tin movies. Tin movies. Confused. Tin Cup? What the fuck is Tin Cup? Uh, Google it, Anthony. Let us know. I'm going to go on. Tin Cup. I wanted to say thanks to Ruggs yet again for the rad movie recommendation. it is a Costner movie. It is Kevin Costner golf movie. It's a golf movie, yeah. Yeah. Sounds exciting. I've never seen it. My friends and I- Renee Russo. Ooh. Back in her prime? I liked, I liked Rene Russo back in the day. She, Cheech Martin. Oh, he Cheech is in it too? Don uh, Johnson. Oh, wait a minute. I may have seen this fucking movie. 
I don't think I've ever seen this. That, uh, Even as a kid, I knew that golf was kind of fucking boring. So Don Johnson and Cheech Marin were also in that show. Are you sure this is not that show? What was that show? Fuck, I can't remember. Uh, uh, look, continuing on, he said, want- Walker, Texas Rangers. It wasn't Walker, Texas Rangers. Right? <laughs> so that was the one. other show. Wait, Nash Bridges. Nash Bridges, that's it. Don Johnson, Cheech Marin. Another show that went on for like 20 years. And I don't know why. Uh, they- because of the South. It was. And old people love Walker, Texas Ranger, yeah. and Nash Bridges, and Matlock. Uh, he says, thanks for the rad movie recommendation. My friends and I were really into BMX and did a lot of BMX racing leagues when I was younger. I also lived in Torrance, California, close to where that movie was filmed. My friends and I found out they were in need of extras for the movie. I didn't get chosen as I was a little too young for what they were looking for by a couple of friends that actually got in as extras. The movie is terrible, but brings back very fond memories. The music is amazing. Anyway, have a great show. <laughs> Keep up the good work, Ron. Thanks for writing in. Uh, I might have to watch Rad again just for fun. Oh, it's great. Uh, finally, uh, one last thing, and this is something I posted. I have another way, listener, for you to help support the show without doing anything extra. Uh, we have a affiliate link for Merchoid, which is a great geek site. So if you go to jockinerd.com slash Merchoid, buy one of those awesome geek Christmas sweaters, we'll get a little commission. And now uh, I set up something I should have done a long time ago. An Amazon affiliate link, which is actually something we had the first when we started the show, but we had no listeners, so nobody used it. So <laughs> all you got to do is go to the website, click through the banner, or just type in the browser bar, jockandnerd.com slash Amazon, and then all your awesome purchases. Who doesn't use Amazon? I'm pretty sure everyone yeah. listening right now uses Amazon. Uh, I'm using it right now. Yes. All you I'm ordering shit right now on Amazon. Jock and Nerdlings. I know you use Amazon. All you have to do is just click on the link or put jockandnerd.com slash Amazon. And then it's just keep shopping. Same just experience. Shopping. You will help us out. We will get a commission, holiday commission. Uh, so I, I, uh, Seth Morgan uh, found out something interesting, which I have to share. He said, instead of hitting the link directly, I tried typing it into Google. And this is what I got. Read the second entry down. Okay, so if you go to Google... Type in jockinner.com slash Amazon. Not in the browser bar, but in the search window. You get a couple of interesting results. The first one is our Amazon Alexa skill that is up. I was sure it's up. I wasn't sure this was working. You could say enable jock and nerd. And then you could just tell Alexa, tell jock and nerd to play the newest episode. Tell jock and nerd to go back five episodes. Uh, it's free to enable. So you'll see that link. You can get us on all your devices. But then... The second link is the beauty. Uh, Seth Morgan accidentally found the book series that the show was inspired by. Yep. The Jock and Nerd book series is two books in the genre of straight men turned gay slash first time. Oh, that is about first you time about. gay experiences. Well, this is this is this was the real inspiration for the show, not a jock and nerd. No, it was nothing about comic books or superheroes. It was, a jock it and nerd. was us, the writers of that book series. I love this book. Here, can I just read the description of the jock and nerd book series? The first book is called gay camping trip. Pitching <laughs> a tent's never been this much fun. Being the gay friend in the group isn't easy for Arnold, especially when his straight friends are so hot and muscled after, Whoa. after Chris, the football star breaks up with his girlfriend. He's desperate for relief. Too bad he's in the middle of nowhere with no women to help him. Arnold has a few ideas. Unfortunately, Chris is 100% straight. Or is he? <laughs> this 7,900 word first time gay erotica contains detailed descriptions of gay sex in a pitch tent. Includes anal and oral situations with a sweaty football player surrendering himself to the first time touch of an out and proud gay male. It's intended for those who love erotica stories involving straight and gay men. And I literally just read that off the Amazon.com page. Yeah. Uh, there's two My books. My favorite line from that book is, when I tasted his shit. <laughs> <laughs> I felt so engorged. Oh, my God. This is gold. I can't believe I. this is it's the Jock and Nerd book series. Actually oh, is a it. thing. Buy one for all your. Hey, use jockandnerd.com slash Amazon. Order yourself this book. Uh, we'll get a commission. Wow, wow. That, that was fantastic. Wow. That's fantastic. That, that is a that is a wow. That is wow. A, that is a wow. Wowie zowie, Anthony. That's how you close the show. Yes. Uh, do we have a felty league update? That's how we're going to close the show. I, I still suck. Okay. I don't care. Wait. Um, he is the national felty league update.
birthday. Anthony's losing. <laughs> I'm losing. I haven't. I haven't tried. I'm still losing. Okay. Um, but the standings. Chaz Hybrid still in the lead in the Marvel division at nice. nine and three. Nice. Matthew Lawrence in the lead in the DC division at nine and three. Wait, I think there, the playoffs are coming up. There was no soon. movement. We were at nine and three last no, fucking no, week. No, no, no. I know. There's no movement. Fucking football. Why don't they give everyone a ball oh, so they don't I have think to fight over it? That's oh, we're in the playoffs now. Oh, playoffs. Yeah. You can't talk about the playoffs. Uh, let's see what the playoffs. Let me let me do this. All right. What's the playoffs look like? So. What am I doing here? I don't even know what I'm doing. Doing a faulty league update. I know, but... (laughs) All right, the winner's bracket. (laughs) Let's do this. All right, the winner's bracket. You have... He's totally straight. Game of (laughs) Thrones. Matthew Lawrence beat Ray Swanson. Oh. Joe Swintek beat... Jose Gonzalez, is that his name? Sure. I don't know. Uh... Roberto Rivera beat Ray O'Neill. Okay. And Chaz Hebert beat Chris Williams. So the final four yeah. in the Felty League right now are Matthew Lawrence, Game of Throws versus Joe Swintek, Jeezy to Snowman. Okay. And then the other, other side, Roberto Rivera as the Felty Falcons playing Chris Williams as the Hazelnuts. So those are the final four teams. Wow. That... So Chaz Hebert has actually been eliminated. Yeah. Right. Chaz with the best uh, records without. This is very exciting. Whoa. One of you fuckers yeah, is going to get a t shirt. When this is oh, all over. And me and Matt, Matthew Miller, the speak pipe loser, <laughs> uh, tied last week. So. Oh, you guys tied, huh? Yeah. Interesting. Oh, Who, who's your pick for the win there? I'm going to say Matthew Lawrence. I don't know. Who's going to win it yeah. all? Yeah, Matthew Lawrence. I don't know. Fuck if I care. I'm surprised we don't have any Matt Miller audio this week. Uh, yeah, nothing. Maybe he's nothing. busy. Nothing. He just found these books that we maybe that he we found, found the, the Chalk and Nerd series of books and yeah, he's just he's, you know, he's pitching his own. He's gonna send us a review. Well, yeah, we're in the playoffs now. Pitching a tent's Two never more weeks. been this much fun. Two, <laughs> Two more, more weeks. weeks and it's finally over. Thank God. Thanks for participating in the Felty League update. Thank you. Let's do baseball this season. No, no, that's not. No, that's <laughs> not. Well, not. Rex, where can the listener find you? What are you up to? I'm going to be reading these Amazon books. Yes, please, and please then record that. Done, please I'll, read it out loud and record. Can we do audio books for these? Maybe I, we could do that. If I could just read a paragraph. I don't know if I could make it. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitter at Really Rug Boy, where I'm, where I'm uh, trying to be more active. The guy on the cover is quite a honk. I will say that. Does he look like Anthony? No, you can't really see his face, just his chest <laughs> and his abs. <laughs> this is a close-up on his chest. It could be Anthony's. I think it is modeled after Anthony's abs. <laughs> Looks very, yeah. very familiar. Uh, <laughs> thanks for listening to this silly-ass show, Lester. Uh, the Jock and Nerd Podcast. Thanks to you. Uh, help us grow. Tell a friend. Share the show. Post it to your social medias, you fucks, and spread it around. Uh, all over your face and chest. Spread it all over your face and chest. <laughs> We'll see you next week. My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the jock. He's a nerd. And we'll hear you next time. My balls was hot. <laughs> hey, shut the fuck up. I'm doing something.